Wagwaglids need to tell you about our Patreon. You need to sign up. It is the best Patreon in the game. Starting at just three quid a month, you can get access to the entire back catalogue of Patreon content. So you get an extra episode every single week. You also get early access to these public episodes and you get access to the Patreon specials that we put one out every single month of. And the entire back catalogue of those specials includes... We've got all the lock-ins with Ishan, Stephen Tries, Jamie Hutchinson, Johnny Bongo. They're now legendary and there's more to come. We've got the last dance, the roast of Adam and Dan, the food challenge, the footy challenge. When we went to... Lorette Demand, it just became an absolute mess of a rugby league special. And, legendary. And next year, we've already got Amsterdam and Nashville booked. We've got a restaurant special coming soon that's going to blow everything away. We've got another lock in coming very soon. Go to patreon.com slash have a pod, sign up for three quid a month or five quid a month or ten quid a month, get yourself access to all that bonus content and become a proper member of the team. Stop and, being a pube. And you get to watch this 48 hours early. Yeah. Get on me. Go ahead. Put my knob. In your mouth. Wag Wag Leads, you're listening to the funniest podcast in the game with Adam, Dan, Sensei Kal, and Finn. This is the one and only Have a Word. Brought to you by Manscaped.com, the very best in below the belt men's grooming. Go, Ed, get on me. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, we're now recording. I can't get on the internet. Oh, I'm on the, I'm on the internet. Yeah. Hey. Thank you, Liz Trust. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. State of the art You're podcast done. studio with the worst Wi Fi in the country. I was about to blame the fucking Tories, but then the internet started working, so all is forgiven. I don't think the Tories can be blamed for anything. Carry on. I think they're doing the, as good as they can. Yeah, you know, they've been like cut today, them some slack. A special, you know when uh, are people just going to lay off them and let them get some stuff done? Do you know what I mean? Because if, if we just laid off them for a while. Who knows what they could achieve? It's all it is is the loony left jumping on their backs every time they make seventy six mistakes in a day, and that is not their fault. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When they're trying to cover up seventy seven, the... now that's too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. they'd be the first to say it, <laughs> but if a government can't make seventy six brutal mistakes in one day, they've elected a special needs emu as their leader, <laughs> and now we are all watching them go. Ah, I can't believe it. She's a fucking idiot. Who, who could have known she's a fucking idiot? You, you pack of twats. You elected what? her. Yeah. Have you seen she wears a necklace? Have you seen she wears a necklace? And what? it's a circle. What? You know Liz Truss, the Prime Minister? She's got a circle necklace? Yeah. Do you know what that means? What? It means she's a sub. It means no. her husband dominates her. Oh, no. Yeah. And if she goes to gangbang, she's the one that everyone shares. Oh, God. I wonder if that's why she had that bemused look on her face. She's been fucked sideways the other day. Like, <laughs> Prime Minister, can you answer a question? Oh, God. <laughs> too many dicks. Absolutely too many dicks. Yeah, apparently that means she's a sub. I've seen it on Twitter. Hole. So it's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard she's got a Queen of Spades tattoo as well. She has. Separate What's issue. What does that mean? <laughs> Let's not get into it. She likes gambling. <laughs> Naked gambling. With certain friends. Is that what a Queen of Spades means? Yes. What is it? Huh? Okay, good. I can't explain it fully because it gets dark. But you know the BBC? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know there's two versions of that. You know there's the one on one the internet. Two. Yeah. And oh, then there's yeah. the one on the news. Yeah, BBC so. Three. Okay, good. Don't that's, make me. That's back on its own channel now. All right, yeah. nice one. All right, cool. <laughs> All right. Bye. I play <laughs> Tell us what it is. Um, she, it's just a thing. It's a thing similar to the circle. It's a tattoo that some- She's got a sexual preference. She has a sexual preference. Right, okay. You know, some people like a milky coffee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people don't. Some people are lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about coffee. So good luck, Liz Truss. Fall in a fucking hole, you daft bag. Um... Rolling blackouts is going to be fun. Can't wait for them. Yep. Thank you, Liz. You What's a rolling blackout? Bell. They're just going to turn all the electricity off because we haven't got any electricity because Vladimir Putin is a cockwomble. Right. A murdering cockwomble. But, like, how, how can they turn my lecky off? Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> they can't go around Why, to wait. every building, can they? What? They can't go around to every building turning the lecky off. I think 
I think there'll be a switch somewhere. I don't think they have to, like, uh, I Adam, you all right? <laughs> Sorry about this rolling blackouts, lads. Come on, I know you're in there. I can hear the fucking PlayStation. What if you get a generator? Cool. Generator. Yeah, my granddad used to have one of them. Yeah. He was um, an electrician. So back in the <laughs> day. Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. When I was... <laughs> Blackouts used to happen. But he didn't trust the ele electrics. <laughs> I got a fucking generator. Don't trust the fucking mains. No, but like back in the day, um, you might remember it. Like, there used to be blackouts quite a lot, didn't there? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? When are, you, when are you talking about? Just refresh my aged memory. Like the 70s and the 80s. The 70s and 80s. Uh, I don't know. but Apparently, I don't think there were blackouts in the 80s. I think it was the 70s. There was a three-day working week at one point. Yeah. It's very familiar to what's going on now. Yeah, yeah. Like, things are not working well. Yeah. So there'd be blackouts quite a bit, but they weren't, like, intentional. It wasn't like the government, like, turned the lucky off. It was like, something went wrong. And, um, like, they'd what? happen for, like, a night or whatever, and, like, the whole fucking city would be in darkness. Yeah. And then, um, my granddad had a generator, so my mum's house always had lucky. <laughs> cool. That's yeah. a good, that's a smart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Smart. I mean, it's the original smart meter. Aye. Nice. Little, what was his name, your granddad? Vinny. Vi was that the original oh. Vinny Rowe? No, Vinny. Oh. Oh. Can you copy bleeped. mum's, bleeped. Can you copy yeah, mum's bleeped, maiden name bleeped. off? Fuck yes. <laughs> bleep it. Bleep it. Fuck it Yeah, so I think with the rolling blackouts, um, it's because they're... How do you... Come on. What it's, are we... It just must be a switch in there. There's yeah, just, but they can't do that. Like, what about me fucking freezer? They can't be defrosting me how fucking chicken dippers, mate. How much is in your freezer? <laughs> <laughs> just two bags of ice oh, and two yeah. Chicago town pizzas. All of the families that live out of their freezer and Adam's like, yeah, fuck them. I've got a fucking bag of chicken dippers. It's 38. It's not even one of the small ones. Yeah, I haven't got much in my freezer, but like I've got stuff in for emergencies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. I've got two Chicago town pizzas <laughs> and some bags of ice. <laughs> Just Chicago town pizzas, what do you mean? <laughs> like if, oh, if like if everywhere shuts down again. Oh, if there's another kit, yeah. If there's another lockdown and they shut the shops, I'll be sound. <laughs> <laughs> Till lunch. <laughs> also, the worst thing is when you've got two Chicago town pizzas, right, you've got to make them last. And that'll be the only time in your life where you're like, I literally need to eat two Chicago town pizzas <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I couldn't help it. You know, you just need to eat all the food in your freezer. Yeah, well, you've got to, you know, and you've got to worry about that. <laughs> As a single man with expendable income at 30 years old, it is scary, isn't it, rolling blackouts? What will you do? Mm. Yeah. So just good luck. Thank you. Good luck. How do you think it'll affect the pod? How do you... Th do you think we'll, we'll record in the darkness? What, with no power? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll ring me granddad. That's all right, yeah. We'll get a generator. Yeah. Right, okay, cool. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, but fuel prices are mad as well, isn't it? God, I fucking hate the Tories. Um, it's it? It's, it's <laughs> fine. We just have to record early. I mean, we always do. We're fine. It's fine. And it might not come to that. It might not our downloads, though. If people can't use the internet and the Alekis to get it downloaded. They'll have to get a generator. Get a generator <laughs> for your iPhone. Go to generators.com forward slash Carl10. <laughs> yeah, use 10 Carl 10. 10% off, off all your generators. I would not be fucking surprised. Oh well, let's let's just deal with it. We got through the pan panny D, didn't we? We all went a little bit insane. We, I think, we're just being tormented from up on high, and we'll get through it. We'll all get through it. We've got each yeah. other. There'll be got... an election before Christmas, I think. We... Or it'll be called before Christmas. Why would they call it an election? Yeah, they know. what do you mean? Because they know they're. Why would lose. the Tories call it an election? Because they're going to have to. On because what, on even what Tory backbenchers are now saying there should be a general election. We, no one voted for this, and it's chaos. Yeah. I actually think the Tories right now, a lot of the more intelligent ones, I think they <laughs> understand, <laughs> right? The ones that are buying up generators as we speak. <laughs> I think they understand that the situation is sort of beyond retrieve and it would be better to put Labour in charge of dealing with it and go, go on, fix it, be in opposition, keep calling them cunts and then go again at the next election. Okay, all right, cool. It's not been done very often that. No. Like, governments usually call elections when they think they can win elections. Yeah, but I, don't, I, th I think there's going to be, I think their hand is going to be forced. Cool. Well, we'll see how that goes. That will be a bit of a pig of an election to yeah, win. Poland, uh, like, 
between 18 and 22% in the polls, which is just unheard of. The only, and then the only... on top of that, she's going to go this week. <laughs> she's got a party to get to. Yeah, she's going to go this week. So then there'll be another prime minister, the prime minister with no mandate that no one's voted for, who won't be able to get anything done. There's going to be an election before Christmas. You called. sounded from you the you sounded like you went Wirral there. Yeah, I did yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Well, I, I, I just from a sort of, I'd like to see it happen, but there's also the uh, we could cling on try and get back some of those points because Tory MPs are worried about losing their seats, aren't they? So if you go into an election and you're polling at the lowest point ever, their big fear is we lose our seats. And they will cling to that job. Yeah, but they might do it for the good of the country. Hey! hey! Best joke of the part! Do you know what's really, really funny? This is how volatile British politics is at the minute. We're recording this on Thursday. This goes out to our Patreon Saturday and publicly on Monday. Everything we've just said will be outdated by Monday. She'll already be gone. Maybe. Or Maybe. she'll have done something mad and she'll now be polling at like 80%. I, honestly, if, I think if she walked into uh, the Houses of Parliament and just did a massive shit on the dispatch box... I, it's just I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Oh my god, uh, the prime minister, put your kecks on. Why are you well, pulling she them down? She forgot to vote in her own fucking confidence vote yesterday, yeah. didn't she? Her own bill. Yeah, because she's outside pecking at the ground. <laughs> oh, who threw trill down? Come on, <laughs> you know you can't throw seed down in front of the prime minister. <laughs> yeah, fucking this will all be it. fucking. A waste of time come Monday. Do you know what? Twitter was fun this morning. Also, James Corden's getting fucking piled on. Yep. Yes. We knew it. Yeah. For being a rat to a restaurant in uh, in New York, yeah. he's the rudest person they've had in 25 years of being open, just being a, an absolute shit to the staff. Fuck off, Corden. He's that is a side for he's, every story. He's going to come back here. That's the only Hang problem. Hang on. Hang on, let's just let's deal with the devil's advocate over okay, here. Sorry, I missed that. And in defence of James Corden... I'm just saying we don't know all the facts. No, we never know any of the facts, Adam. That's what we thrive on. But we thrive is, on not knowing is, anything. I will concede that he is a rude, fat, horrible cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but... We don't know all the facts. But... We don't know whether the way he says whispered in his ear, listen, you fat, un unfunny twat. Listen, punch your fucking head in. And I've spat in your dinner. Like, if that happened, and we don't know that it didn't, yeah. then fair enough, kick off. I would. Yeah. I think, do you think James Corden would have, instead of apologising profusely and asking if he can be take, like accepted back into the restaurant, do you think he might have mentioned that in the press to everyone that would listen? I think it would depend on his PR's tactics, would it? Uh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I just don't know. Did you see... Did he you is see a gobshite, though, isn't he? Did you see the best one of him on the aeroplane? Did you see what? Did you see that tweet? No. So he was on a, a flight in America somewhere, and he was in first class, and he had a seat next to him, and a lady brought a crying baby, sat next to him for the whole flight, and he, he ate it. Yeah. He just he put his mask on and headphones on and just went to sleep. And at the end of the flight, he got up and it was his wife, and he just ignored her for the whole flight and left the baby and just ignored it. As a dad, I wanted you know. I want to say respect. I want to say that I was like, oh, everyone's like, that's oh, awful, isn't it? But he's like, you know, babe, I've got work. <laughs> it's basically what I do every night. Listen, darling, I've got a podcast. No, that is that's bad, isn't it? That's bad. He didn't eat her. He didn't eat the he baby. Didn't eat no, the baby. Just me being silly. Just ignored his wife. Just through ignored a his wife. Transatlantic flight. Yeah. Do you reckon there's any level of success you could get where you'd become that level of cunt? I don't think you'd let me. I wouldn't let you. Carl wouldn't let you. Carl's your best friend, but also, like, what we've got here, I don't think... Call each other out. Unless we ended the pod and went our way and then had another hugely successful thing, but I just don't any of the people that I surround myself with would let me what behave What if you were like removed that? from that, though? What if you get a phone call one day from a hit Hollywood agent? <laughs> I, don't get, I don't get fucking phone calls from slightly special Northwest agents. <laughs> go on, go on. It'll be nice. A London agent, maybe. Give us a call. No, like a, uh, yeah, yeah. a Hollywood agent just like, Danny. Oh, yeah. Danny, okay. we got some work for you out stateside. You're going to have to leave the podcast behind, but we'll give you a two million signing on fee. What are you going to say? Be beautiful. Can I just ask what your name is? Johnny. Johnny, because I know a lot of the Hollywood agents. Me, you know. I'm Johnny know Hollywood. Johnny, Johnny Hollywood. Hollywood. 
Johnny Hollywood. I mean, that was always going to be your job, wasn't it? Being named Johnny Hollywood. And which part? It's of a family m- business. What can is I say? It? Are you sure you're not part of them? You sound <laughs> mafia affiliated. <laughs> you're from New York. You're from one of the boroughs, aren't you? What? You're from- I'm from Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> Respectfully, you've really lost your uh, <laughs> Missouri twang. Yeah, you know, you want to get things done, you have to speak a certain way around here. Okay. Yeah. All right, okay. So, Johnny Hollywood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hollywood. Um, no, call me Johnny. To, to be fair, this is a great time. You're We're going to be great friends, you and I. Okay, cool. Can I accept the offer? Or okay. <laughs> I, I'm really excited. Also, this country's got, got rolling blackouts, so take me over to Hollywood. Like, it sounds fucking great. We're doing a remake of Throw Mama from the Train. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Well, remake or throw Mama from the Train too. <laughs> no, we're doing a remake, but we're going to franchise it. There's going to be eight of these motherfuckers. Oh, really? We want you to play the lead role. Right. In eight, throw Mama from the Trains. <laughs> Is it going to be like the Fast and the Furious? The first one's going to be throw Mama from the Train. The second one's going to be throw Nana from the Train. Oh, Ew. are we changing train or... Because I see, a, you know, what, what about... Submarine? We're still working on three to eight. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, you... It's very difficult. Two million, you say, signing on fee. Two million signing on fee and four million for every film you complete. Oh, nice. Com- All right, cool. That's a, th- a little bit of a threat there. Um, a total of 34 million on Alpha. You going to come stateside? Great mass. You going to come live with us? Great mass, Mr. Hollywood. Uh, what's your... Also, Puma are interested in sponsoring you. Uh, oh, that makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Once you get the Throw Mama Off a Train franchise, you're obviously going to get sponsored by mid-range Italian sports brand Puma. <laughs> Puma! <laughs> right, cool. So, what do they want me to wear? Trainees. They just them. want. They just want to see you in their stuff. <laughs> Instagram, the stories, Twitter. They want you to do a TikTok dance with a puma, <laughs> with an Whoa. actual puma, with an actual puma. But don't worry, it's domesticated. Oh, a domesticated puma. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so, how much am I getting from puma? They, we're still negotiating now. <laughs> You sign with us, we take care of you. Do I get a free You know puma? what, on the Puma deal, just as a, fa- a friend, friend of friend, I take no commission on the Puma deal. How much commission are you taking on, what percentage uh, do you, do I give up? Standard commission is 20%, but we can talk about that if that's a sticking point for you. I thought you. that was going to be a lot higher. You no, were, no, no, I'm a reasonable guy. Johnny Hollywood, you know, Hollywood by name, Hollywood not by nature. I'm oh, going to look after you. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> have you represented Mike Tyson at any point? <laughs> Because you are one lisp away from quite the mic. Ma- <laughs> <laughs> Look, Mike's a good friend of mine. We spend a lot of time I together. I think you do. I was a sparring partner for a while. I can tell. People don't know. I once knocked him out. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so watch your fucking lip, Danny. You know uh, what I'm saying? Okay, well, that's not... We're friends, but, you know, I got a fucking line. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. Cool. That sounds... You've really sweetened the deal with the last bit. Um, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. I'm absolutely in. How can I resist a real-life puma? <laughs> A free polo shirt and four million a film, <laughs> two million signing on for. Yeah, I mean, I'd say yeah. What was the question? <laughs> Do you want to come and live in the Hollywood? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. Yeah, time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. There's a plane waiting outside for you. Go get it. Oh, nice one. Liverpool International. Now you're gonna be a twat. That's how it works. Instantly. Do you think I'd be a twat then? Yeah. <laughs> if you're dealing with pumas, all I might day, take you out day. with me, just to really f- fuck these guys up. What would you? Would you come for? Yeah. If I was like. Listen, we're going to go and hang out with the Arctic Monkeys in Hollywood just to piss Carl off. I'd love it. Hey, and yo, they, Danny. And they can it's Johnny again. Songs. Listen, okay, we got you a full team out here. Don't be bringing that prick Finn with you, okay? Oh, well, God, you listen to the pod. I listen to the pod. I'm a big fan. How do you think I fucking heard of you? I, you know, I've been watching it since day fucking one. Ten pound Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Danny! It's Johnny again! I think my PayPal changed. I can't see any of the fucking content. Yeah, uh, you're not coming, Finn. Okay. Johnny Hollywood's fucking hates you. I don't Steve, know what you've done there. Steve, Steve will come nah, with you. Steve's got to stay with Carl. They're married. <laughs> yeah, they go on nice holidays together to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Oh. Yeah. They've gone to liberal Muslim land. Liberal Muslim land. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're a bit more chilled. Yeah, Abu Dhabi's a bit more fucking hey than Dubai. 
I put it this way: I won't bum my husband on the beach. <laughs> yeah, they're liberal to a point. Although you're not really allowed to bum your husband on any beach, are you? <laughs> Even it's in this country. Yeah. What? Nudist, nudist beach in Abu Dhabi? Yeah. No, no, no. You are not if you're uh, uh, allowed to have sex with. Uh, even on nudist beach, are you? I thought nudist beach was just you're allowed to work, w- walk around with your tackle out. I thought nudist beach was just like a gangbang in the sand. Yeah. Oh, gangbang in There's the some sand. some films about it. <laughs> Liz Truss has been in that film. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell because of an haircut. Can I get a ruling on nudist beach? I thought it was just like Can old you have sex on a nudist old, beach. Old people so that uh, have. Do you know, I'm so proud of everyone with little dicks that goes on nudist beach. Like, if you have a weapon, I'd t- try and turn every beach into a nudist you know, beach. Every nudist I've ever seen, though, has got a tiny little cock. I've seen some weaponies. I've some some weaponies. Sex is not allowed on nude beaches no. any more than it is no. allowed on other beaches. Anything. It's set up here, though. Anything is possible. But it's typically <laughs> frowned upon. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah, but that, that that's true of any... I mean, you're not allowed to have sex in Marks and Spencers. <laughs> well, anything, anything is possible. Is possible. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Laura would be up for it, but if you've had someone that was like, yeah, let's fuck. Of all the shops, though, Marks and Spencers is a classy one to have sex at. It's got, you know, know, it's got some of the nicer toilets. Yeah. Oh, we're just doing it on the... On the floor. Oh, you're talking about in the toilet? <laughs> in the cafe. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Marks and Spencers, I'm throwing it out there, one of the worst shops to fuck your missus in. Yeah, because there's too many old people around. There's too many old people. <laughs> no, what I don't think they'd be scared. You forget old people have seen too much. If you were fucking in the middle of Mark and Spencer's and if an old woman found you, she'd be like, oh, fucking hell, put some pants on. Yeah, but then but then imagine River Island, you'd be judgy. <laughs> put some pants on. Yeah, they'd just be like, oh, Jesus uh, Christ, again. Do you not think they'd be, again? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of fucking I'm seeing on the second floor. Old ladies. people are hard to startle, though. <laughs> I wish I wish the camera was at that angle just to see him. You know what I, I mean? No. They're looking at his face and he's like, I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I do. Old, old people are whole, hard to start. I, 100% they're not. Yes, they are. Because they've seen more than us. No. They've seen war, famine, blackouts. They remember them. I'm, tell, I'm they, telling you. They live through the swing You walk 60s. around the corner yeah. and go, ah! That's what an old person. That's not the same thing. Them. Oh, I thought you meant startle. No, oh, no. Right, okay. startle as in like they're not surprised by much apart from like jumping out and scaring people. Obviously, that scares everyone. But like, there's not like a thing old people can see that they'd be like, eh, eh, like more than me or you. How how many old people have you hung out with? You like, <laughs> yeah, the amount of old people of yeah. Oh God, what are you doing? Sniffing ketamine off someone's tits? Oh, we did that back in the fifties. But they did though. They did. They were all doing fucking coke off each other's nipples. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What the fuck? What was he out of a generator and a fucking coke for? <laughs> Old Vinny. No, no. No, but the 60s was just drugs and fucking, wasn't it? No. No. Someone I love. Get away. Not in fucking. <laughs> Heighten. <laughs> what in working class Liverpool? Oh, yeah. It was everywhere. The old girls just fucking and shagging, <laughs> ketamine off each... They hadn't even fucking invented ketamine, but they were doing it. No, but they were doing coke and puff, weren't they? Where? In San All Fra- over the world? In San Francisco? No. Not oh, from Preston. What's like your Canada? picture of the summer of love? <laughs> I want, what, what do you see when you the think of it? Love. Yeah, what are you, what are you imagining? I thought it was just like a summer where like they just... All over the world, people just wore fucking... Like... Fluorescent shirts, did a load of fucking weed, <laughs> like tinted sunglasses, and was eating pussy all the time. Yeah, yeah. In working class <laughs> Liverpool, down the docks in Seaforth, <laughs> I was just shagging. Oh, can I? We need to unload this massive ship. Fuck that! I'm shagging everything, wearing luminous clothes, neon clothes. Sorry. So what was the summer all of then? I think it was just a load of people in America, yeah, in hippies. certain places in America, just smoking weed, doing acid. Listening to so that Jimi Hendrix. I mean, I mean, maybe on you know Portobello Road and whatnot in London. There I must thought have it been was a, like a worldwide phenomenon. It was just a blanket rule arranged, just yeah. like right, yeah. everyone. It's 1968. <laughs> Get your knickers off. Fuck something. Yeah, I just thought like oldies were all proper asset in like the 50s and 60s. Well, my granddad was born in 1925. 
So that would have made him 40. Is it what Summer Love about? 68, 68, 68 69, isn't 68, it? 68, 69, dude. So he was 40. That's why, that's why so he was like 44. He sucking dick at the same time. It's called a 69. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was. Because <laughs> that's when it started. He was. He was <laughs> was invented that year. <laughs> he was 43, 44 years old and worked as an oil rep. <laughs> selling oil around the northwest, but in the evening. But in no, soon as he I sold that oil. last, what? Yeah, I think like you know, baby oil, baby oil, lube. <laughs> He's the first gay guy. It's a miracle, I me. <laughs> Summer of love. Can we? Uh, can we just pull up yeah. Summer of love? I just feel like Adam. Adam's idea of where. Especially Liverpool was just a hard fucking working class. It was 100,000 people. 67. 100,000 oh. people in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was the epicentre. Yeah, but Highton was pretty shaggy as well. Yeah. <laughs> 1960. <laughs> All right, Images. cool. Yeah, I mean... Well, I'd have been into that, you know. Of course yeah. you would have. Oh, well, the, ni- the right 90s was the most similar, wasn't it, to the to the 70s? Like, the, the late 60s. They said, like, the 90s was another, like, boom in oh, yeah. drug-taking and oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. shagging. Mid-90s, what, when Britpop was going off, yeah. couldn't finish my GCSEs for shagging. We were all on acid. What are you on about? No, no, but it was, like, pills, wasn't it? And, like... Uh, in Manchester, it was like the Hacienda. Yeah, like the Hacienda and that. Yeah, these, yeah, yeah. Oh, the ra- oh rave culture yeah. in the late 80s, early 90s, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's but I was at primary school, so it's not like <laughs> the whole of the northwest was just like on pills. Like, come on, Dan, you've got primary school. Fuck, I haven't slept since Saturday. This is what you're imagining, isn't it, Adam? Yeah, in Liverpool. That's Sefton Park. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't look dissimilar to Sefton Park on a on a summer's day now. <laughs> It doesn't yeah. though. That's what it looks like. They have all got that haircut. They've got those sunglasses on. People have tops off. Instead of a, a fucking whistle or whatever it is around his neck, it'd be one of those little fucking bags that all the scallies have now. That is what Sefton Park looks like. Is that a whistle around his neck? Why are they at a whistle? I don't know if it's a whistle. Maybe he was also a part time referee. <laughs> I'd love to go back. I'd love to go. That's something I'd love to do. Time you know, travel. in time travel to go and watch like a Liverpool game on on Anfield back like fifty years ago when they were singing Beatles songs. Were they? You not seen the videos of like the cops singing Beatles songs, the standing cop, literally just yeah, just oh literally God. not to do with football. Can't buy me love, I think, is all I've seen. But they just sing the whole song word for word. It's just like a quiet. But it's nothing to do with. Fo- they don't parody it. They're not like changing it like they do these days for a footballer. It's just they're just singing that. a Beatles song. When we is have that, a break, is that, like, in a minute. is that the Shankly era of of Liverpool? The Beatles, Beatles is sixty two to sixty six. That era of the Beatles. So yeah, it was, it was just before, isn't it? Mm. I'm a Shankly late sixties, early seventies. Mate, I'd I'd love to go and see what football was like when they were just yeah. There's ninety thousand people on Deepdale in Preston. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. You Shacking. see, you see, pi- you just see pictures, <laughs> and it's just there's just lines of kids on the fucking touchline and then just everyone standing you couldn't move you just had to piss on the on the terrace didn't you you just they, they, they just used to leave the kids didn't they and then the oh, no, kids were, kids were down at the, the yeah. bottom yeah i love the old photographs on melwood where there's literally kids sat on the wall all around the training ground watching shankly coach the Liverpool team there's kids just sat on the wall just watching training shankly played for preston didn't he we've yeah. got a sh- the, the, they've they've got a shankly stand when I went round to my granddad's uh, about six months ago, he's he's so like I think I mentioned this on the pod, but his memory's so bad. But I was asking about uh, football and whatnot, and he remembers listening to the nineteen thirty eight cup final when he was like twelve, thirteen years old. Is that the Stanley Matthews on? Um, no, he, he Stanley Matthews played for uh, Blackpool. We had Tom Finney, but Shankly played in that nineteen thirty eight team as a defender, and the, and then went on. Uh, to be the Liverpool legend manager. Um, I love that fucking, I love that era of like, I don't know, I just find it fascinating that Deepdale, now there's only like 12, 13,000 people go and watch football. Football's massively popular, isn't it? Football's so much more popular than any other sport in this country. But back in 
1938, nothing else there was 60,000 people on Deepdale. Like, it's just mental. No coverage. You had to go and watch it. Otherwise, you just didn't see it. I love all that stuff. Yeah. don't know why I find it so fascinating. It's because it's romantic, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's genuine. It's, it's pro- it romanticizes a sport you love. That is sort of like we've never really, I've never known football without TV football yeah. at all. Like, not when you were a proper young kid, because you're 10 years older than me, essentially. Yeah. Like, there was very minimal TV when you were like a. We didn't have Sky. I, I never had Sky in my my house. Like, Premier League, we never. I, that's why football Italian. But for genuinely, the first 10 years of your life, there was no Sky. So I I got into football in and around the 1990 World Cup. And that's why World Cups were so much bigger than everything because it was it was you had to be able to watch it on the BBC and whatnot. So everyone got to watch those. Also, England were good. <clears throat> but the 1990 World Cup will be, for anyone my age, particularly legendary. Um, then the Premier League comes in and, and it changes everything. I mean, everyone was football mad, but Sky completely changed the coverage of it. But I never benefited from that because we never had Sky. Yeah, I remember my mates who had Sky got to watch The Simpsons. I was so fucking jealous because The Simpsons was only on Sky One. At, I think it was 6 p.m. on a Sunday. So jealous. They got new episodes of that. Um, but yeah, to completely change it. But it was still, the country was still absolutely obsessed with football, wasn't it? I just, um, sometimes when you think about history, you think about kings and queens and, and like, that's what people think about with history. They think about architecture and whatnot, but the history of sport, that would be so fucking cool yeah. to stand. Um, being on North End, my, one of my memories of being on North End, because my dad did take us to football. I've said I went to Anfield a few times. I think it would have been in about 93, 91, 92, Preston North End uh, won their playoff semi. You know, there was the playoff semis. Your second leg was at home, and then you went to Wembley for the playoff final. I would have guessed it would be Division 3 going into Division 2, in and around there, I think. And uh, Tony Ellis was the striker um, who was really good. And it was the last day that North End we're going to have a, an artificial pitch because North End had a, not an AstroTurf pitch, but like... 3G. Yeah, like not three... No, AstroTurf. Yeah, it would have just been AstroTurf. Yeah. So there was just a rumour going around that everyone was, after the game, going to go on and get a bit of the pitch. It was just this known thing. And the game was mad. It like uh, Preston won it, I think, 3-2. It was a great atmosphere. We were in the, the town end and uh, the, the it, which was standing... Back in 92, 93, it was like it was still standing. And at the final whistle, they'd won. And I remember just being pushed forward by all of the lads behind me just rushing. And I remember a great little dad memory. I remember just feeling my feet just go light because my dad went, fuck off, and just pulled me out and just carried me out as the whole town end just attacked the pitch. So the whole stand just went like that. And if, I don't know if my dad realised what was about to happen, but he obviously saw what was going to happen. And just as I was about to get fucking trampled, just lifted me out. And I just remember we were in the car park a few minutes later. It's a good job that's a happy, happy memory because that could have been fucking bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. That's the, And that is like totally the dad instinct. I mean, I've, I, give, nope. <laughs> I give my dad a hard time now, but it, like when, you, the, when you're a... He would have must have been about my age now, and he's just gone up oh, danger, and then just <laughs> lifted me out of it. And uh, yeah, the, all of everyone that was on the North End on Deepdale that night just went and ripped up a bit of the fucking horrible green carpet. Yeah, football's not what it was then at all. We were there last night. We went to watch Liverpool West Ham last night, and we were on the very back row of the upper main stand. We might as well be on the fucking roof. I get the good tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Did you sort the ticket? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> Why? Why is it like this? All right, we're both going. Your turn to sort the tickets. No, he got them in the I ballot. Them, oh, yeah. nice. So he, I didn't oh, even right, have okay, to try sorry. for West Ham. He was like, months ago, he went, oh, I've got nice, you the West Ham nice, ticket. Nice. All right, sorry. Um, but like last night, every now and then, the cop had started a song, and occasionally a few people around us would join in. And at times, I was screaming, looking at everyone, like, just fucking <laughs> please make some noise. And then, Joe Gomez filed uh, Bowen for West Ham. And it was so obvious it was going to be a penalty, but it had to go to VAR to be given. And there was a fucking guy on the row in front of us <laughs> filming the referee 
going to the VAR booth. Like, I hate people getting their cameras out to film penalties or free kicks or corners or anything like that. He got his phone out and he's literally filming the referee, following the ref to the VAR booth and then back. And I was literally going, why are you filming that? Who are you going to show this to? I couldn't fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I was... <laughs> Who's that for? Who is that for? Do you think he's British? Do you think he's a tourist? His very Chinese face suggested otherwise. <laughs> 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 right, I need a break. Uh, see you in a sec. <laughs> What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? It's Ooh. Halloween season. <laughs> I'm doing the scary bit. Michael Myers sure is scary, but ah. the last thing you need is to be hairy this Halloween. What a cheesy intro. When they send us the copy over, we very rarely read it, but I like that. This is Manscaped. Manscaped.com, long-time partners of the Have A Word podcast. The absolute best in men's below-the-belt grooming. They've got the Performance Package 4.0. That includes the Lawn Mower 4.0. There's the Crop Preserver. There's the Ball Toner. The new shears. There's the new shears, the shears 2.0. You need to clip your nails. Use the shears 2.0. There's body wash. You get two free gifts when you get the performance packet 4.0. You get boxes and the shed travel bag. Look, they've been a sponsor for a long time. If you're not on board with Manscaped yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Not only is it good for you if you're a man, it's a good little Christmas present for other people as well. It's an amazing Christmas present. What are you meant to buy for Christmas? This whole set, and it's honestly, everyone has used it. They've sent us one. They're amazing. They Just are really good. Clipping the jobs. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code WORD20 at manscaped.com. And say trick or treat to your beautiful new Halloweeny. They mean your cock. Oh, like penis. Weenie. Yeah. Back. Part two. Of four. Dan, I want to know if our listeners have got any queries. <laughs> queries. Queries? Yeah, we have some queries. Send your queries into Havel... Into... Into fucking Havelwordpod.com At gmail.fucking.com You absolute set of dafties. Uh, Daniel Daly says, hey, leds. Um... So I was listening to Rogan's podcast and he mentions how he used to watch specials in the cinema and how it's the next best thing to actually go into a club. Made me wonder if either of you guys would ever do that, especially with Adam's due to come out soon. A premiere in like Fact or something will be sick. What's Fact? It's an independent cinema. In in, in Liverpool. In Tate, Liverpool. Just off Bold Street. Maybe like a Q&A set up afterwards, then bevies in Pogues. Nice one. Love the pod. Danny Jess. Um, I... <laughs> Really like the idea. I do as well, but not for lids. It's for friends and fans. No, I don't. I don't think that's necessarily true. Oh. I think it's a really good idea. I just, I've just got a feeling. I don't know. I, I imagine it not selling. I mean, it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It does. It, it feels a bit. I'd, I yeah. Now I'm putting myself in it because we're recording my tour at the end of the. Thing and that's going out in January. And I'm trying to imagine how I would feel watching my own stand up with a hundred and fifty people watching it. Mm. I don't know if I don't know if maybe I'd kind of want to do that because I've never ever been able to do it. It's the only out, time out, I've out, ever dude. been yeah. yeah. But I I could see the potential for like uh, if they weren't going for it. But it's interesting. Will just came when you were all talking about that. Yeah, maybe maybe this is something worth looking into. I don't know. I don't necessarily feel excited about it. It's made me feel a bit anxious, but maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. Yeah. So I want mine to go out in January when everyone's just kicking about doing nothing. Just I think YouTube, realistically yeah. mine's going to be December now. All right, cool. Both what? on YouTube or anything else? I can't say that yet. Oh, exciting. ITV are this close. It's commissioning... ITV2? Broadchurch 4. <laughs> Good. Once, listen, one, once I get Johnny Hollywood on it, <laughs> I reckon I'm going to make some... Hey, Danny, we got an money. inquiry here. You know this special you're filming in a church? ITV4 want it. 
They want to put it out <laughs> Sunday at 3 p.m. After Sorry, Paro. Sorry, Johnny. <laughs> Who won it? IDV4. IDV4. <laughs> they want to put it on between Midsummer Murders and Agatha Christie's Poirot. <laughs> Agatha Christie. <laughs> Are you tired, Johnny? What are you saying it is? I'm saying yeah. They're offering you a three special deal. Really? Yeah. All after Poirot, though. No, before Poirot. Oh, Listen carefully, sorry. Danny. Don't make me fucking repeat myself. You know what I get like when I haven't had my yum yums. <laughs> is that your cocaine? No, it's a fucking sweet breakfast, you fucking punk. Um, <laughs> is Poirot still on? Yeah. ITV. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lord. My mum watches the same Poirot five times a week or something stupid. Every time I go into the front room, it's on. Poirot's on. But she's I, got good taste. Yeah. She likes comedy. Yeah, but she just loves watching Poirot, even if she's already seen it. Oh. And is surprised every time by who's done it. <gasps> no way. Yeah. She's already seen it. Being stoned and watching, I mean, I'm not a big one for weed, but I can see the appeal of being stoned. I've never watched a murder mystery stoned. I think you get right into it. Quantum Leap, I think stoned would be a lot of fun. Do you remember Quantum Leap? You don't, do you? No. No. Do 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 but hello, hello. You How know. are you? <laughs> hello, hello. You'd be it's on the same vibe as the presenter you. there. The presenter on CBBS are absolutely coked after dads. They'd have to be to be that happy. CBBS presenters love the shite. Um, there's one with one arm. Oh no, she's not doing it anymore. She I've had. Seen she her. just had one arm. I've seen her. Yeah. She was a birth. She was born yeah. without one arm. There was complaints. Like they it's had crystal on it. They had com Chris. Yeah, is the guy with black hair. Yeah, very smiley. Oh no, that's Andy who does Andy's oh. um, adventures. <laughs> I've watched so much CBBS. I have kids, by the way. If this is the first time you're watching, <laughs> going that old cunt shouldn't be watching CBBS. I do. You actually. can watch whatever you want, mate. If no, anyone's judging if, you for that. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck them and everything. If you're watching point. Andy's dinosaur adventure without kids, is that not instant register? No. Have you ever been offered kids TV? Yeah. Which one? Do you remember it? I got offered an audition to replace... Um, Pat Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> there was a show on CBB, CBBC, not CBBS. And Slightly older I got audience. offered an audition to replace the host on one of them. And I was like, I don't know whether I want to take my career in that direction. Yeah, but what's our man called? Oh, fuck Ian it. Sterling. Ian Sterling's done well off it. Hasn't yeah, he? but that was, he, that he, was like, the start. That was, that, I watched CBBC when Ian Sterling was on it, but he was my era of CBBC. I remember when he's... That would make him up. feel ancient if he come in here. Yeah, <laughs> say it. Him and Hacker. <laughs> we need to... Well, Ian Sterling was meant to be on and he couldn't do it, could he? Like, was he... Yeah. Can't, did he have to cancel? He had to go to the island a week early. Right. Uh, Ian Sterling is super sound. I'm looking forward to having, having him on. He's going to be great. But I remember when he came and did Open Spot to the Frog and he was like, everyone's like, oh yeah, he's a CBeebies presenter. He was a decent comic. Yeah. You're like, who'd want to do that? And he's like, you know, paid half a house off in Didsbury. Yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah, but he also had ideals on doing presenting as well. By the way, just a little side note here. Uh, I have been encouraged to imply for the next series of Love Island to be a contestant. Right. Bye. I think they're going more body diverse. Right. So it's just you and Lizzo. What <laughs> What would you mean, though? You're sort of famous. They don't... No. They, There's people who go into Love Island who've got more followers than me. Really? Yeah, but they're, they're not, like... They're not telly, are they? They're all influencers. That's I, I've I've been asked to apply. Uh, Please do it. Uh, oh, my God. Um, no. Don't. It's partly why I've been taking the fitness thing a bit more seriously. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to smash some puss on... ITV. I don't know whether I'd shag on the telly. I'd finger bang, but... Do bits. Yeah. Would you do bits? But, like, I... <laughs> Serious question. Uh-huh. My mate Matthew, we hung out in Birmingham. We came up to, to Brum to watch the tour show. And um, a friend of ours is in the running for... I'm a celebrity. I'm just saying this loosely so that we don't... I don't know if it's public knowledge. 
We've already said it, haven't oh, we? Have we, have we yeah, said we've it? Said Sean. It. Yeah. yeah. It's in the yeah. papers. Cool. Great. I just did that thing because sometimes I'm really bad at putting my foot in it That's with that. Fine. Yeah. Um, Sean Walsh is going on I'm a Celebrity. That He's going into the jungle. Yeah. And Adam was like, would you, uh, so Matt was like, would you do that? And I categorically would never do that. Yeah. And, then he, was like, and then he was like, Means. and then he was like, would Adam do that? And I think, I was like, I honestly believe that at some point in the next 10 years, Adam will do it. I would do it. I didn't used to think I would, but I would. I got asked a couple of years ago whether I'd be into it, and I said no, because I think I'd come across as too much of a cunt. <laughs> you know what it is, though? Genuinely. I, like, I think you can't... The reason reality TV works yeah. is you can't hide who you actually are for that long, right? No. Yeah. So you always come across as whatever you actually are. And I think yeah. generally, like without patting myself on the back too much, I'm really sound and I'm a team player, but I am a leader and I'm not necessarily a gracious leader. So if people aren't pulling their weight in terms of like those challenges, if someone come back and was like, I got two stars, I'd be like, you're a stupid fat cunt. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to control myself. I'd be yeah. like, get back and eat the squirrels, dick. Now I'm not asked. I'm not asked you don't like it. I didn't like eating the fucking gorillas from all yesterday, but I did it. <laughs> I'm not having beans on beans for me fucking scan again. Go back now, Sheila. Sheila Ferguson. Sheila Ferguson. <laughs> Can I ask about the, just before we, because it's an interesting point. Before we talk about that, was the gorilla's bum hole attached to a gorilla? Did you have to rim a gorilla as part of that challenge? No, no, no. Was no, it no. you had to eat gorilla's bum hole like, on, a, on a, like a nan? Yeah. Nice. Sounds good. Protein. Yeah. Um, I think you've got a temper. And it flashes and then it goes. Yeah. Um, I wasn't used to that a couple of years ago. Now I'm used to it and it's fine because <laughs> you don't hold it against anyone. But when you flash, and I think if you were under strain and you were hungry because someone had fucked up, I don't oh. think a lot of other celebrities talk how <laughs> you talk. No, no. How you talk to Carl. <laughs> It's quite straight down the line. Like yeah. I've 20 years in comedy and I've worked with some backstabbing, bitching cunts who are horrible to be around. That's never your vibe. No. But you go, what the fuck you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, for a lot of people, they were like, I like to watch. I'm a celebrity. Oh, he's a Liverpool comedian. And apparently he's got a podcast on the internet and we watch every night. Why is he shouting? Like, I poor think, old Sheila. I think it's possible. It's totally possible for it to be edited in a way where it's endearing, where people would be on my side. But I think it's also possible for it to be edited to make me look like the biggest asshole on the planet. Because yeah. I don't think I lose me rag unnecessarily. And maybe I'm being very self-serving biased there. But I, I only lose me rag when I can't, understand why someone can't understand my point Yo, oh, oh no i believe that when uh, and this by the way i'm not this has happened a couple of times like this is you, you don't um, you're not two times i can not, think of yeah, in, in yeah, the yeah you're years. not you, but you do get annoyed yeah like you have a very strong opinion on how things should be done mm -hmm. and i think that in the jungle is a is a bit, a bit brutal yeah I'd be, I, 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 if they come back and they hadn't put their all into a challenge and they had like two stars, I'd be absolutely fuming and I wouldn't be able to either. I genuinely, I'd be like, well, I'm what? telling you, you would make some of the best telly for them. The, yeah. uh, the, the first weekend, the producer would be like, um, oh, it's going to be tasty. I'd literally be like, right, so you got two stars, right? Well, I'll do the challenge tomorrow. Like, I'll literally look down one of the cameras and go, vote me to do the challenge tomorrow. I'd do it, I'd get 10 stars. I'd be like, you're having none of it. <laughs> You're having none of the good dinner. You're getting what we had yesterday because you failed. Starve Sheila. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think if they get a clip of this, you might be in next year's <laughs> uh, the celebrity. They'd be like, oh my God, he's going to be. Honestly, free. like I would, I, I wouldn't be able to handle people not doing the challenges and being me being starving. I couldn't, like I'd be fuming with people. I'd be a proper team guy and be like, look, we've all got to get each other through this. But as soon as one person, be like, you're on your own, fuck off. You know, if some Belen celebrity starts crying because you've been like that. They are going to, they're going to make a lot of fun out of painting you in the wrong light. I mean, not even in the wrong light, but TV producers are murder for that. Yeah. They're like, they want it to be horrific, don't they? They know what they're looking for. 
think it's dangerous. Matt was like, if Adam was in the jungle, would you then go on? What's the extra one? I'm, I'm sorry, get me out of here now. Now. He was like, would you go on? They're like, I was like, no, I wouldn't even go on that. I want no cunt that watches that TV show to even know who I am. <laughs> but I would love you to go on because obviously we want different things from our careers. But just in terms of the story when you got back, I would actually watch it. I'd watch it as well. Yeah. All of us would watch it, wouldn't we? Yeah. It would be... I'm going to watch it if Sean goes in. The, the, the spike in Liverpool audience like would be amazing. Are you going to watch it? I'm so worried about Sean. I'm so worried. I, he's but he's like, so sound. That is what it is, is isn't it? It's, uh, hopefully. Do you know what's going to endear Sean to the public? So I was talking to Jimmy McGee about this when it broke that Sean was going in. Jimmy's got mates with Sean yeah. as well. And Jimmy was like, he's going to come across. He's going to be made to do every challenge because he is going to so genuinely hate being there that it might endear him to the public. Because he hasn't got what I've got in me, which is like, oh, fuck off. He hasn't got that. Oh, no, his head will go. He's got, oh, fuck's sake. His head will go. Like, I've seen him... Look like he's about to have a mental breakdown on like day four of the Edinburgh Festival. Yeah. I that's my worry with like Sean is a great guy. Sean Walsh is a great guy. And he got absolutely poleaxed by that fucking story. And it, it really badly affected his mental health. Kiss, let, let, if you've look, not seen he, it on he, YouTube, he will he will admit he fucked up. And you know, he, he, you, you always deserve a bit of blowback when you fuck up. And he will be the first to tell you that. But you know, it, it the, the, the treatment in the fucking tabloids and the fucking newspaper that I'm not going to fucking give any... Yeah, when you're on the front page of the rag, they're not really interested in your side of the story. You're just... You, you're serving a purpose as as the, the... You're like the bogeyman for the for the week or whatever. I just hope that... I just, uh, just don't know. I'd be very wary of, of going back into the mainstream. Like, it, it just, just I think he wants it. I think he wants a shot at redemption from it. But yeah, in answer to your question, I would do Amos Liberty and I would take the gamble. But uh, genuinely, and I wasn't doing a bit, I have been encouraged and asked to apply for the next series Love Island. Oh my God. Right. Um, right. I just don't even know what to say. You wouldn't do it though, would you? Adam. You wouldn't do it. Why? <laughs> Why? He'd be the best and most interesting Love Island contestant of all time. I know, but he's going to make me watch Love Island. Yeah. Yeah, but imagine Love him Island's being great, by the way. just placed into it. It's just alien. I'm just going to spread rumours the whole time if I go in. I'm going right. to break up every couple. I'm going in with absolutely no intention of finding love. I'm they just, just they, you can't do that though, because they'll tell everyone that you did it. You don't mean that, do you? No. No. Yeah, just like. Hit Put doubts in everyone's oh, mind. I want to see it. I cannot go on any of these TV shows because I would just live in fear of like the when they've got footage of me scratching my arsehole. It would just be on day one. See, I don't. There's Dan in the because, corner like, because there's already footage of that on the internet of me because I've done it on this a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I think you'd suit Strictly. I think you'd be great on Strictly. Fuck you and your Poirot watching mum. <laughs> That hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I made me dizzy. I'd have had a hurty laugh. <laughs> what are you talking about, Strictly? I think you'd be endearing to the, the general public. And, oh. I, and you can move. I've seen you have a, a good old dance. <laughs> Finn, I know you're trying to be nice. And you can move still with your hips, <laughs> you old cunt. Um, strictly. No, I can see you on Ready Steady Cook. Oh, oh, ready, your steady, chicken dippers cut. and your nachos. Oh, totally. Just like nine beige things. Bake what off. can you make? Beige, warm beige. Bake Off. Celebrity Bake Off. You'd be great on that. All comedians would be great on that. Yeah. Saw Acaster on that. Acaster nailed it. Yeah, because just, if, if you can't bake, then go for it. Just lean into the, that is an abomination. It's half of his last special is all about Bake Off and how he was jet lagged. On a come down, uh, like for not. Come, He's super so busy, Caster. Yeah. Um, you haven't seen that special, have you? What? So good. It's, no, it's the most recent one. No, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, completely subverts everything he's done before. So good. Yeah, he's so. F I love a Caster. Um, you should absolutely watch that. Actually, um, 
Any other stand up I should be watching? Um, I haven't watched like an idiot. I haven't watched Bill Burr at Red Rocks. I'm. I've. I said to Adam last night. I've got a plan for this weekend is to watch the new Shane Gillis special thing. The, the Gillian Keeves. Gillian Keeves sketches. Yes, that's my plan for this weekend. Do you know what? I've got tomorrow night off. I'm in Leeds tonight doing the tour. Second soul that night. Um, and tomorrow night I might watch. I might watch Gillian Keeves in the in the garden office. It's fucking great, like the Hitler Trump Hitler yeah. sketch that you showed us. <laughs> oh my god! And the Vietnam veteran cooking show. Oh my god, Iraq veteran. Oh, it's so fucking good. Early next year, I'm gonna start doing some of those sketches. Not those sketches, but I'm gonna start doing sketches. Um, with the cameras we've gotten with William, and you've got some ideas. Yeah. What's whistle for it doing? What's the what's the pod? What's the me and Carl are gonna have a little meeting about that next week. Nice. We'll start very soon to coincide with the World Cup. Oh, Johnny projects. Um, can, can we just do a quick? Can we just do a... Kind of diversify, just like Love Island with their contestants. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just do a quick recommendations for stand-up to watch? Um, James Acaster's Cold Lasagna Hate Myself, 1999. Is that on Netflix? No, no. it's on Vimeo. Oh, Vimeo? buy it. Okay, cool. Um, Gillian Keeves is special. Gillian TV, I think it is. Schultz um, special still available? Schultz is on YouTube now. Nice. It's available for free. Need to watch that. Um, I've got a lot of stand-up to catch up on. Bill Bear at Red Rocks is good. There's a few of our Is he on lot, form? A few of our lot it's of like Bill Bear's stuff. reached his final form. It's it's literally like he's going... <laughs> the people who ever get annoyed with what I say, I'm going to just really fuck them off. Yeah. And some of the stuff is just so, so good. Um, I haven't watched loads lately either, to be honest with you. Uh, um, there's a few that have been on the couch that have released recently. Mark Nelson's got a new special out, hasn't he? I've not seen that yet. Yes. But, um, Today's guest, Finn Taylor's special, which we've promoted before, is up there. And please keep going and watching Alfie's special, Alfie Brown yes. Live in Liverpool, yeah. which we made for him. And it's, uh, it's really quite fucking excellent in every way because it's really well produced. And also, Alfie's on absolute fire and he does a club set rather than more of his... his narrative cerebral stuff that he does in his hour long shows it's you know it's more clubby stuff and it's Alfie so it's show and it's raw as the well the entire industry I can Fresh, do it? You I can there's tell. a rawness to it tell it was it's not been he's in that mo yeah. he's in the moment performing that stuff yeah, yeah. I, well, he was so nervous before and he made me think is he gonna nail this because he got to, he was like he was in his notes when mate I could do the show you could hang me from the fucking ceiling I could do the show, my show now. I've done it so many times. He was developing those bits in those last few days, wasn't he? Yeah. And it, you can sense it on stage when you watch it. It's also brilliantly filmed. But um, he's he's living it as it's happening. It's great. Um, just one more stand-up question. Michael McBride says, Wag Wag Lids, I recently watched the Andrew Schultz special and he got Bruce Buffer to do the whole, it's time thing as he went on stage. And I was thinking, if you could get anybody to introduce you as you walk on stage for a special, who would you get? Keep up the good work, lads. Best podcast in the world. I think it's Thank hard you, to look past Mickey. Joe Pasquale. Right. It's time. <laughs> Ladies and gents, he's Adam Rowe. Who? Adam Rowe. That's the fella from Some Mothers Do Have a Minute. Um, <laughs> Betty. <laughs> Can anyone do a Joe Pasquale? I thought that was Joe Pasquale. I think I'd do Pingu. Wow. What? I can't do Joe Pasquale. I thought it was just Squeaky Cockney. You all right? It's my Joe Pasquale. Is it? It's very similar to my Mike Tyson. <laughs> you real piece of shit. Do you know that? <laughs> He pulled the head off my pigeon and I beat him to death. Yeah, I'm the heavyweight champion of the world. Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah, Joe Pasquale is a good show. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Pasquale. What's the X Factor guy called? Peter Dixon. I did not expect you to know that, but yeah, him. It's good pop quiz answer that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Rogers uh, and gentlemen. Ian Sterling. John Nightingale. It's as bad as my Joe Pasquale. <laughs> no, it's fucking. That was perfect. That was that was a louder version of your Ian Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> Next in the fucking villa. Yeah. Hello. You right? <laughs> you Joe Pasquale. Daniel as Dennis Pasquale. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> love. Um, who would I have introduced me? Bren Riley was my first ever uh, comp at my first ever gig. He'd be available. We could do a full circle thing and, and get Bren Riley on. Could? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Happy to eat sausage and just get me on. Yeah. That'd be nice. Nice little bit of... Uh, Nate Bargatze's got his daughter. His, his daughter... Well, Etta does the patron intros. Etta she? does the patron intros. Everyone whinged about the new one. Yeah. People grow. Okay. Also, it was bugging me that she was calling the patron exclusive, the patron special, because yeah. it was from two years ago. Yeah. The Af... Oh. The African voiceover lady. Oh, the African voiceover lady. Is this the edge? Don't do it. It's offensive. No. Can't do her voice. Whatever you want to do right now, you got to email her and give her some money. And she has to do it. All right. Cannot do it. <laughs> Welcome no! on stage. Welcome on stage. One of the best comedians. Gav Webster. From Preston. Top five. <laughs> <laughs> right up there with Phil Ellis and Freddie Quinn. <laughs> Gone fucking mental. <laughs> I'm from Zimbabwe. <laughs> Gone absolutely fucking mental. It's Dan Nightingale. Don't get him to do impressions because he's fucking shit. Yeah, I'd like the. I, I, I'd love that. Okay. We should think about that for the Have a Word Arena show. Do you do your own one? She wanted a lot more money just to record her voice at her house, though, last time. So the African voiceover lady, smart cookie, initially cost me £10 to get her to do the first one. She was like, happy to help. I paid a fiver extra as like a tip. And then she also gave me 24 hour delivery. That was in December, 2019. She obviously has access to YouTube because last time she asked for 300 quid. She's like, <laughs> I'm not fucking stupidly. <laughs> I'm fucking African. <laughs> How? <laughs> How are you? How are you? I'm not doing voiceovers for life. And you're making a pretty penny off my fucking dulcet tones. <laughs> Oh, Jordy is absolutely insane. Oh, <laughs> it's the way that when you do your Jordy, this is audio listeners, you miss out on this. It like explodes out of his face. And it has to like literally arch back. I'm doing Jordy. I'm a little Jordy Muppet League. Fucking dafty. <laughs> Fucking absolutely belting, right? Let's call a break. Let's have a little fucking scram. I'm going to have our fucking lunch now. Oh, I'm going to have loads it. of dinner. Loads of dinner. I'm having a mixed grill and a garlic naan. <laughs> All right. See you later. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? We are two weeks in to our fitness challenge sponsored by Whoop. If you don't know what Whoop is, Whoop is a band. It measures your fitness. It measures your recovery, your sleep. And Whoop doesn't just tell you what you've done. It tells you what you've got to do. So if you're not working out enough, if you're sleeping badly, if you're sleeping at the wrong times, Whoop will tell you what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, what you need to improve on and the stuff you're not doing that you need to do. It's completely personalized. It drives personal change. I'm loving it. Mine's on charge at the minute. That's why mine looks a little bit chunky. Tells you when Dan's. to go to sleep. Helps you with your recovery. Something that I've not known about is when you're in a in a in the peak zone to actually do fitness and stuff. It's telling you because of recovery, mate. You're good to go today. You've slept properly. You're ready to exercise. It's been great. I've There's over it so far. 70 people now in our uh, Have A Word community. Uh, you get the app on your phone. It tells you everything. You can also, if you're in a certain community, uh, like I'm in the one with my personal trainer. I'm also in the Have A Word one. You can chat with people in your group. You can see how you're doing compared to everyone else you're competing with. I haven't been doing very good this week because Liverpool beat Man City. Uh, and I went on the aisle and whoop, told me off. Uh yeah, so Dan, tell everyone how they can get involved if they want to get involved with the Whoop Fitness Challenge. And you don't just have to join and compete with us. Honestly, I will be keeping this long after this eight-week fitness challenge is over. 
If you're interested in joining us, uh, unlocking the best version of ourselves, go to join.whoop.com slash have a word to get started. Once you're up and running on Whoop, you can join uh, the team via Whoop, by the Whoop app, by inputting the following code, C-O-M-M dash H-V-A-W-R-D. That'll be on screen right now. If you check out using that link, you'll also get a free month's Whoop membership thanks to the Have A Word podcast. This will allow you to get started for zero pounds. And with our 30-day return window, you can essentially try before you buy. That's join.whoop.com slash have a word. Make sure you use that exact link so that they know we sent you and that you get the offer. That's how you get it. It's very important that you go via the link. We appreciate it. It's, it's going to be roast amble, you know. Carl's beating me good. at the minute, but You're the comeback's good. going to be spectacular. You look great. I feel good. You look attractive. You know I mean? Yeah. I haven't been eating. I've just been on a diet of Guinness and vibes. And a whoop. Finn, have you got any, like, connections to the current Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> when you, and when we say current, that's in. <laughs> at the time of record. Right. Well, hello. Um, <laughs> Finn Taylor's here! Yeah. Yeah. He was like, I've, totally, I've got a connection to Liz Truss. I know you do this for, a, you do this for a couple of years. There, is, there probably was a smoother way of doing that. Oh, he way. did that. No, you don't Very need to be smooth purpose. in the podcasting game. Just fucking hammer straight through, do you know what I mean? People don't like subtlety. It makes them work too hard for, the, yeah, yeah, for their laps. Prob- that's probably true. <laughs> Um, <laughs> right, well, Liz Truss, who is at the time of recording still in power. Just about. Just about. In power is the wrong word. She's yeah, the she's, Prime Minister. She's, she's around. By the skin um, of her beak. So basically, beak. <laughs> beak. <laughs> she does, do you know who she reminds me of? You know when you go in a pet shop and there's always that parrot that's been shaved because it's been like abused and shit. <laughs> <laughs> and you, do you know what? <laughs> Do you know, like, I, there's a, always, I've, I've got, always, there's always one. Pets at home. There's always every, one. You, you lift, every it's, got a, um, it's got a duvet over the cage, and you lift it up, it's like, ah! Do you not have it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I and go, it says I things, in, it um, says human things, but they're dead sad, yeah. like, end it! End it! <laughs> you say that. We, I go into the local pet shop because my daughter likes to look at the fish. Right. She's a baby, she's not. Well, she might be. Slow, we don't know. It's too early to tell <laughs> what her mental faculties are. But for a baby, she's sort of <laughs> the licking of the tank is a yeah. worry, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The inside of it as well. How's she, how's she, how's That's algae, there? babe. I'm Come like, on. Bobbing for apples is a different thing. <laughs> she's eating a fish. But no, we go in there, and then there's this one parrot, this beautiful, you know thick green plume and hello and she's like ah and then there's this duvet over the cage you sort of i think maybe the parrot's sleeping you lift it up and you go i'll be good i'll be good (laughs) what's that been through jesus christ anyway that reminds me of liz trust that's what she looks like (laughs) just as the cover comes off the cage um no so i i well i just have this i realized on the train up here that i have this store i have this sort of connection to her that i might as well say now because i haven't have it's not. It's going to be irrelevant. You've not fucked Liz, Liz no. Truss yet. At <laughs> well, <laughs> any parties? Um, What's your heritage? Anyway, so I, because I went, to, I went to um, private school, but only because my mum ran the boarding house, so I got in for free, which means I have all of the baggage, but none of the money. <laughs> um, so no, people, hang on, what? Your mum, your mum. She ran a boarding house for girls, and so we lived in a flat. My mum was a teacher there. We lived in like a flat in the girls' boarding house. And at that time in the 90s, teachers' kids got in for basically free. So you oh, went yeah. to an all-girls school? No, it was a mixed <laughs> mixed school. Right, okay. <laughs> Very forward thinking back in those days. <laughs> there was, it was just a girl's... I've been identifying bo- as a girl since I was seven. <laughs> Sorry, you <laughs> grew up in a girl's boarding house for The though. first five years, yeah, seven, age seven to 12, I lived in... Um, Girls boarding house. <laughs> what happened at thirteen? Were they like this? Guy, this kid's a shagger. It was like <laughs> it was a real Hulk moment where just the sort of <laughs> and they were like out. We're done. <laughs> it was in the contract actually. First, first wet dream, and you have to move out. He's in the shed. Yeah. <laughs> Where's Finn? Like uh, the hunchback or not so gone, just chained. <laughs> ah. <laughs> anyway, so I, the, you know, so I, I go to school. I, w- I went to school with um a lot of people who are now in these kind of circles. Anyway, there's this kid, I, I think it was history class. I don't know, I don't know when, I have been, so for some reason I think it was like after 9-11, but before Iraq. <laughs> the, sort of, okay. the sweet like, spot. Um, <laughs> for me, that's like in between Christmas and New Year. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the, 
<laughs> That's a geopolitical gooch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No what one you, knew what, what day what it was do? for that entire time. <laughs> what do you do with that time? You can't go away. You know. All you can do in that time is watch Shrek and yeah. have turkey buddies <laughs> and wait for Blair to give the uh, go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I was 11 or 12. Anyway, we're in history class, and then this, this kind of sort of deep kind of fecal smell starts circular in the like a, a thick, like a sort of farm or, you know, Chinatown. The, hey, um, just one not, not, no, not Fecal say, means poo. Sorry, carry Not on. to say China, Chinese food. I mean, you know, it's thick. It hangs in the air. That's what I mean. Anyway, it's a really rich smell of shit. And, what um, kind of Chinese farms? Do you, you know, like <laughs> agriculture or Chinatown. No, you know, but you know in Chinatown, it's like the, the air is kind of greasy. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I don't mean in Chinese food smells of shit. I mean the, the kind of. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, it doesn't matter. The point was the, the room smell of shit. It's a fog. Um, and uh, the history teacher was like, uh, oh, fucking, oh, is, anyone, is everyone all right? And this guy was like, oh, I think I've had a bit of an accident. And he was like, Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he said, go, go and sort yourself out. And by the so, way, so I shouldn't have had to ask. <laughs> if you've had an accident, you should have put your hand up first. Yeah. I'm just saying. Who's <laughs> shitting himself and going, Do you know what? If anyone asks, uh, I'm not going to uh, lie. Adam, private school. <laughs> in private school, we are so entitled that you go, I'm just going to wait for people to smell the shit before I own up to what I've done. <laughs> anyway, um, so he puts his hand up and goes, I think I'll, this is me. So he goes, right, you go clean yourself up. And then uh, the lesson carries on. He's talking about War of the Roses or whatever. And then after about five minutes, he's like, oh, God, no, sorry, it smells too bad. We've got, we've got to leave. So we, he, he took the class to the library and we like... They just like, he was just like, read a book. I, I can't deal with that smell. Just to, and then about, um, someone had left a note on the whiteboard saying, oh, we're in the library. And so there's a kid that did this. He came back to the library and the teacher went up to the door and went, hey, whoa, whoa, hey, what are you, what are you, what are you doing here? And he was like, oh, I've, I've sorted myself. And he went, no, no, no you, I think you should go home. You, it's, still, it's still too bad. Uh, anyway, that <laughs> kid uh, who shot himself so badly that we had to leave, it, he's now the chief speechwriter for Liz Truss. <laughs> <laughs> And my mum, my mum, who was a teacher at the school, went, you cannot tell that story publicly. But I think, fuck her, my mortgage is going to go through the roof. So <laughs> as a metaphor for what cunts like him have done to the country. And let's just remember that next time there's a general election. Remember, we should be my, my history teacher who saw the person who'd shat himself. Come, went, no, 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 you, you stay at home. That's what I think we should do as a country. Yeah, clean yourself up wasn't, you know, a few towels from the bathroom and then... On, on your comeback. No, it was have some dignity and go yeah, yeah, and put a bullet yeah, in your head. <laughs> he wrote such famous lines as, I don't know, um, and uh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> All from his pen. <laughs> he obviously fit the Tory party though. He just, he shat his pants and was going to let everyone else work it out. He wasn't just going to put his hand up and go, hang on. I've got something to yeah, tell yeah, you. Yeah, Just yeah. ride this one out. Else, I may have shot myself. Right. Right. Ride this one out, Tristan. Is there any other notable alumni from your school days then? Um, Emma Watson. Yeah. Pulled her hair in year three. She didn't invite me to her party. Now where is she? <laughs> <laughs> Emma Watson's Harry Potter. Uh, Hermione. Yeah. Well, yeah. actually, nowadays, who knows? Anyone's, <laughs> Anyone's Harry Potter nowadays. And J.K. Rowling would hate that, wouldn't she? <laughs> She'd really hate that if Emma Watson was like, oh, fucking, I'm Harry. This is <laughs> goes to mining. We are, we've got loads from our school. We've done this before. We looked at the alumni from Dan's school, and there's one guy who was a Navy ship captain who was on involved in two ship sinkings. Dur during wartime or just, no. just fishing? No. <laughs> and Stephen Borthwick, who used to play for England. England rugby. rugby. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had loads at our school. Did Borthwick win the World Cup in 2003? He, was he on the South? No, first? I think he was Somewhere captain there. like in that era afterwards when it all went not as good. The bit between 9-11 and Iraq. Yeah, I <laughs> And um, uh, our school was just like a, a behemoth of sport and prowess. And murderers. Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. okay. <laughs> well, there's been, so there's been five convicted murderers from my year. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. But then also, you know, Stephen Gerrard, David Nugent, uh, David Price. Who's David Price? He was a boxer for a while. Right. Did very, all right. Very large man. Olympic silver then medalist. Got, then he got done for murdering. <laughs> <laughs> Beat someone to a pole. Uh, Paddy the Baddy Pimblet. Yes. Our school. Yeah. Me. You know, yeah. I was quite the lacrosse player in my time. Really? Uh, yeah. Me. <laughs> Guess who went to my school? Me. <laughs> 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 this is the big one, Finn. This is going to blow you away. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It's quite a few. Um, 
There was a couple of others as well. What was your, what, just, I'm fascinated by, like, fee-paying schools, especially yeah. London-based, I imagine. No, uh, Oxford. Uh, of course, yeah, much cheaper. Yeah. Uh, how much... <laughs> How much a term are we looking at currently? I, I honestly don't know. What are you it's guessing at? It's a five, right. five or six grand a term? Uh, probably, maybe more. I don't know. I, th I think, I mean, it was like, it was basically a feeder school to like Eton and stuff. Right. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like 10 or 20 grand a year. God. But I, I've got no idea because obviously me and my sister, we didn't, we're not, not of those types. We just lived there. Did you ever yeah. feel shunned by the rich kids? Yeah, yeah all the time. That's yeah. why I'm a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> it is the exact psychological reason as to why I'm desperate for attention now. Oh, it happened to me at, at uni. At uni, because Newcastle got the dregs of the fee-paying schools that weren't as they weren't bright enough to get into yeah. London School of Economics, Bristol, or Cambridge or Oxford. Newcastle had the, oh yeah, they've had £20,000 a year educations, but they're not. The smartest. Really? It's Newcastle Uni good, yeah? Newcastle's got a lot of RAs they used to get called. Rars, it was just, yeah, yeah the RAs. Yeah, the... Uh, the, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They had oh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Up the RA. <laughs> Weirdly. Quite different. Weirdly, Oxford University produces <laughs> prime ministers and IRA leaders. It's a very weird... It's phenomenal. ...place. Tense place. You ever one, you? one of them was like, oh yeah, um, my father came to visit me and uh, didn't think much of the digs, so he's bought a house in uh, Jesmond. Jesus Christ. So that was... Yeah. His dad came up to visit him, first term of <laughs> uni, went, what the fuck is this, this student accommodation? He was like, yes. And just bought him a three-bedroomed terrace in Jesmond, which is the middle class bit. Yeah. And you're like, cool, well, I'll stay in the shitty accommodation then. Like, that's the level of... Mm. It's ju You just saw a, a... They weren't they weren't shunned, but they were like... They were just a gilet in a different type of person. Yeah. They, they weren't unfriendly particularly, but you weren't part of their... I yeah, had no clique. idea, Newcastle... Newcastle was, Uni is, yeah... Got a is few it? rows, yeah. Same as Durham. Yeah, I knew Durham. Bristol. Well, yeah. Did I knew you, Bristol. Did you, to, Edinburgh. did you go to uni, Adam? Yeah, I went to the University of Liverpool for a week. Never went to a single lecture and then left. Before before fees, was it? <laughs> Literally. Uh, I, so so I, got I, your loan, though. Got your loan, though, lad. No, I didn't. Oh, God. So I hadn't applied for the loan because I assumed I wasn't going to get in. Yeah. Because, so I had an unconditional offer from John Moores. Do you know, so do you know what unconditional means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> I assumed I wasn't going to get in. Well, so you, I had an unconditional really offer <laughs> Your not from correct. Liverpool John Moores. Right. But I was like, I'm just not going to bother if I'm going there. Uh, I'd already been doing comedy for a year. Right. And I was like, I probably, I'm not going to, so you needed A, A, B to get into the Uni of Liverpool. And I just knew I wasn't going to get that. Uh -huh. But I did get an A in maths. So because I got the A in maths and I wrote a personal statement, my personal statement to uni essentially was like, look, I'm going to get an A in maths because I'm really, so I was doing maths at uni because I'm really good at it and I haven't really tried at A level. I've fucked around and that's why the other two results are shit. <laughs> but if you let me in, I promise, I what? promise. What? What scouse is this? Yeah, UCAS works for most of the country, but in Liverpool, we just write a threatening statement. <laughs> no. yeah, listen, nobeds, I've got a fucking A. That yeah. sounds like the kind of conversation that you would be having with your estranged wife from the street <laughs> into a house. Look, I, I've done one good thing. I know the kids hate me, but I bought you that necklace. <laughs> Can you do that? Can you get into university with a with a, I got a in, letter? I got told I was I got into the Union of Bill based on the strength of my personal statements because I wrote it real really colloquially. I, I literally wrote it like a lad. Look, look, I've pro I was like, I've really messed around at A level and not took it seriously. And I've still got an A in maths. Like I, I've i I've really took the piss. I've missed lessons. I've 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 not put any effort in and I've still got an A in maths. But I'm gonna work my damnedest to get to that second week and then we'll see <laughs> you, if you back me now but they let me in on the strength of that right it what was happened? really really you know, sort of casually know, written i know people say oh you went to university you know you have to finish yeah you can't just say i went there for a bit no I'm but like, i did go there for a bit yeah yeah that's i didn't true. i didn't finish either right. i fucked i, fucked I didn't finish it. uni but i right, went okay, to uni sorry, i'm asking the wrong question it's my i point. started i started cleaning the posh kids houses it was great there was money to be made there <laughs> fuck the degree they all yeah, had yeah. brand new terrace houses. Um, it, what did you do for the week? What what what? I in went that to week? all the Freshers Week parties and events, and then went 
This is me done. Well, I literally, I got, I got to the end of the week and I was like, right, the lectures start now. And I hadn't applied for my finance yet. And I was like, I could leave now with no debt and like just give comedy a, a proper crack. Oh, you already gigged? I'd done a year of comedy. So oh, you, right, you basically yeah. wanted Freshers Week. Yeah. And no education. Yeah. Gotcha. And I got it. I yeah. think it's, so, <laughs> well, it's, it's very it's, hard. It's inspirational. It's very hard to keep doing stuff once you've found stand-up though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. When did totally. you do your very first gig? Was it after at, uni? At uni. But right, I okay. basically used the student loan as like a sort of, like a basically an expenses fund for being an open spot. And then I was getting paid by the time I left. So I did. I wish I'd done that. Yeah. I did that, yeah. Yeah. I wish I'd done that. Um, right, she was just going, I won't have any debt. I was like, well, I did get into debt. I just didn't owe it to the student oh, I, finance I, company. Yeah. I owed it to... When I moved down to Manchester from Newcastle for to be a comedian, <laughs> I applied and I'm, I've actually been to two universities and never talk about Manchester Met. I got a student loan to do exactly that. I was like, cool, I need a starter fund to get down to uni. And I wanted to be in student accommodation because it was cheaper. So I've actually f- fucked up two degrees, Newcastle and Manchester Met, uh, for just for that reason because mm. the second time I was like oh I need to be here to do gigs and that just helped and I didn't care about it yeah. I was just straight in yeah it yeah. was great yeah but it's I've fucked up a degree twice now no you haven't fucked it up though did you because you weren't trying you can't fuck something up that you're not trying to do right okay yeah but I mean fucking something up is you're trying to do it well and it doesn't um, work out I, I, I think I think Liz Trust is trying to do it well <laughs> <laughs> but as we've said she's an emotionally abused parrot so <laughs> She's only so much she's capable of doing. She looks like that open spot who's forgotten the bit. Yeah. That's yeah. awful. I've seen that a few times at Beat the Frog. There's not, I mean, obviously people are like, oh, I got saw deaths and I've seen Freddie Quinn do Jim Jeffries material. I've seen people just I've be- I've seen Freddie Quinn. <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen separate comedians. You'll have to be- Sorry, leaving. Freddie, it's just so easy. I, I know be, I shouldn't. Be anti-Semitic, but to watch someone- totally freeze and not have any words oh. is one of the more, like, I'll be honest. Their, their body moves, doesn't it? It's like rigor mortis. They're like, uh, 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 and as uh, a compare, yeah. you feel like responsible. Like mm. there is a point where you have to go, are you okay? But then you don't know what you want. That's to, just going to, just to watch a comedian better. total rabbit in a headlight. So like, uh, oh, it's fuck it. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, to admit it as well, not to say let's do some crowd work or like segue to another. And then be the, be, be the frog. Be the frog. Be the frog. Be the frog was so nice. Just they were like, in. people would go, come on, you can do it. And they'd go, okay. Yeah. No, it's gone. <laughs> I cringe yeah. thinking about it now. Oh. Um, so last time you came in, Finn, you just had a baby and you were really tired and quite stressed by it all. But, um, mm-hmm. I'm just wondering whether, you know, it's. Just over a year later, yeah. I'm assuming it's all calmed down now and you've got your, your energy back. I still like the idea of having a kid. <laughs> um, but the reality is absolutely dreadful. I mean, um, sort of like communism, really. You think it'll work out and then you give them a go and everyone's dead in the shit everywhere. Um, uh, but you're not allowed to leave. Actually, <laughs> it's no, I love, I love the kid. I must stress that, but I, I do hate my life. And, um, <laughs> there are times where I think she's the only thing stopping me from killing myself, and the main reason I want to do it. It's a very unique <laughs> feeling to have, where the one reason to live is also the first thing you're putting on the suicide. Line. But um, I felt like that after the Champions League final in Kiev. Yeah. Yeah. Like the thing, the thing I most want to live uh, for is Liverpool Football Club. But then, do you know what yeah. I felt? I felt when Aguero scored the when the Premier League ended that season, and Aguero that I thought yeah. I can I can never kill myself as long as the Premier League exists. Yeah. If they make a Super League, <laughs> but I mean <laughs> moments like that, it's just so you feel so alive. Yeah. That, um. So I need know what you mean, but no, she's the kid sleeps, but she's she just she goes to nursery, which. I don't know what they're doing there. <laughs> I think they're testing new biological weapons because we are just ill all the time. Like I, the, the reason I'm drinking coffee and whiskey is because I've got blisters in my mouth from some shit she brought back. And <laughs> yeah, what? I don't even know what it is. It's like fucking medi- got le- legionnaire's me- disease. Honestly, it's like medieval. I look at like before I had the kid, diseases I would get right cold, maybe a chesty cough. Piles after a big night, 
fine. Can't blame that on the baby though, can you? But then, I mean, if the baby's bringing back piles, I'm asking some real questions. <laughs> She on Guinness, is she? <laughs> she feed no Guinness. <laughs> um, Does Guinness give you piles? That explains so much. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. <laughs> I would, if you didn't, if you'd never had, just from going for your Instagram stories, if you've never had piles. I think should, I had one, one recently. Medical, you should do medical trials. I think I had my first one recently. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah. It's just boot, It's just too going too hard is what piles is, I think. It's just, you're just pushing stuff down and your asshole just, it has yeah. to, you just force it out and the asshole comes Yeah, out. no 18 month year, old, month year old should be going so hard that they've got piles. <laughs> yeah, piles. Like, yeah. yeah. No, but it's, the thing is, is that there's these weird illnesses that you've never heard of. So you, I woke up and I had like blisters in my mouth and this sort of rash. And I go, what the fuck's this? And then someone goes, oh, it's just arse pox. It's really, it's classic arse pox. And I go, well, how the fuck have I got, why do you get this? And he goes, oh, it's when a kid French kisses a dog and then motorboats another kid. Oh, oh. <laughs> And, and then, pretty just, liberal just, nursery <laughs> that your child's going to. <laughs> it's, all, it's all liberal now. They just let them get on with it. Rim that's the, that's the, the dog. It. And then, um, and then, <laughs> you go on the NHS website, and all of these diseases are like, well, they they spread through contact with infected feces. Now, before I had a kid, I was like, well. If you get that, you're a fucking moron. <laughs> Frankly, if you're spending your weekends going through public toilets hunting for truffles, you get whatever's coming. But now I'm like, well, fair play. The tables have turned. I mean, I mean on, a, on a good day, I've only got shit on one of my hands. <laughs> Today's not a good day. <laughs> the best bit is um, when they're really ill, the nursery won't take them back. Yeah. yeah. They're like, well, obviously... That, you know, the kid can't come to nursery. And it's you're brutal. Like, Why? Because they, they still take the money, though. The kid's ill. They still take like, the money. Yeah, but they got the fucking illness from you. Yeah. It's just an absolute germ fest. But you're pay- and they say you're paying for the place, not the time. So you you still have to pay, even though, yeah, it's brutal. Um, yeah, you know when you wake up and you don't know who you are yet? Yeah. That's the best part of my day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like a sort of blank slate. And then, ha! like, oh yeah, I forgot. I'm and then you feel f- that I'm very fulfilled. I forgot. Yeah, the throbbing of a pile, and it all yeah. comes back. Um, you're going to be going out on tour early next year, though. Yes, mate. So that's going to be a nice break. I imagine you've yes. roosted it so that you've got let's days ex- away. Let's extend it. Come on, <laughs> go buy some fucking tickets. Give me a break. Can you really do five days in Aberdeen, Finn? Yeah, oh, yeah, try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm it. I like a small crowd. Yeah. I'm spread betting. Five, five uh, days of forty. Um. Yeah, February through to May. Now, on all my YouTube videos, I get comments from the fan base of this po- great podcast. So fucking put your money where your mouth, buy a ticket. Where, where can you get them? Is very, <laughs> that came across as very... That came across Where can they get them? Very dark. Um, or, or the link to it. It's all on all my socials. All my socials. Oh, link there. tree. Fintaylor.com. Yeah, man. Uh, February through to May. Everywhere. Liverpool, Leeds, London, you name it. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Four day tour. Three days. Stretching it out. <laughs> Walking there and back just to really eke out the time. Uh, yeah, it's like 25 days. It's not massive, but um, spread out. Yeah, but you're going to extend it. Add more dates so you can be away from yes. the kids. Please yes. buy tickets. Yes. Norway. Fucking the moon. Let's go there. <laughs> Would you take the kid on tour at any point? Are you looking forward to <laughs> taking the kid? <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm booking in tours to get away from the fucker. Um, if I ever did Australia again, I'd, I'd maybe if they flew if they flew the kid out, yeah. seven or separate <laughs> flight to me, a separate plane. Then yes, <laughs> fly the kid out to Australia and be like, Have you "Oh, I'm extending the UK tour. I'm back. See ya." Just, just relaying across the world. <laughs> Have you heard that story about James Corden? Now, now the, the the restaurant things come out. There's a story about James. We spoke Corden. about this with his wife and the crying kid. kid. Have I told you that before? No, he that? told us no, it in the first it. half of today. Yeah, oh, really. It's oh, yeah. fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I grim. imagine something you can forgive him for. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I had the money for those kind of headphones, <laughs> I'd be wearing them around the house. <laughs> what music are you listening to, babe? Nothing. No, just, <laughs> just white noise. Just. <laughs> I don't think we've ever had a guest that's tied into the first yeah, section exactly. so beautifully. Yeah. It's almost like we designed it like yeah. that. God bless. Amazing. Um, you, I think, will get a lot of lids at this tour. 
because I think you're I love held, held in very, very high esteem. Well, Particularly the, after the roast. Yeah. I think the roast cemented you as night, an absolute man. legend. What a fucking night that was. Your last episode was incredibly popular, but that le- that that roast. Well, you guys have been very good to me. It's very, and, and, you know, I love meeting uh, Lids at shows uh, similar to my, the audience of my YouTube shows, you know, dedicated fan base of incels. I mean, we <laughs> do... <laughs> With my YouTube show and your pot, we're really doing the Lord's work. We're, uh, women should be grateful. We're keeping these people from doing some serious harm. <laughs> keeping them away from message boards. <laughs> engaging with a community of other sort of bearded, <laughs> bearded metalheads. No, I love you all. You're, you're good people. No, but, but when, we, when I did that gig for you the other month, I was amazed at the crowd. They were so like so focused. That, like, they wanted to hear the comedy. Yeah, Finn closed the like, uh, Finn closed the comedians club in Chester in September. The next one's in November with Carl Donnelly, and I think the second one Jamie Hutchinson was on. So we had a bit of like, fuck, Jamie's on. Like yeah. his new fans are yeah. a special type of intense. Like, yeah. mm, fucking Jamie's on, and do Dr. Catford again. And the second one was a bit fruity. Yeah, I, well, I had I was a little bit of it, it was a bit, bit more, spicy, a bit more fruity. Because obviously oh my I done the roast show, and that was like, as I said, the fucking beer hall putch. But <laughs> <laughs> they were amazing. That my crowd was amazing. Yeah, was so, yeah. Like, we get for it. honestly. There's two or three percent of the have a word fans are like pretty unhinged. Yeah, the rest are just dead sound and really like dead comedy. Yeah. And and that night in Chester. I, everyone, all the acts came off and went, wow, that was like, they're real comedy fans, aren't they? Yeah. Because yeah. we talk about stand up so much and oh, how yeah. much we care and give a shit about it on this. Yeah. Like, and sort of every third the good question stuff. we do yeah. is a sort of really nerdy comedy question. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, that different people write in every week and want to know some sort of info on how the industry works or how we feel about certain things should be done. We had a bit of a problem after lockdown three. Mm. where that was the first time we were allowed out properly. And I went to, you know that Edinburgh Fringe that happened last year, which was like everyone did two or three days. Yeah. So I did three days at the Pleasance. And in every single show throughout it, someone was shouting out, or more than one person was shouting out pod references. Yeah. And on the very next episode of the podcast, we went for an entire half hour section, we're going to talk about how we don't want that to happen. And it did sort of stop it right now. I see it. It's not, it's not, I think the lids get it now. They're like, yeah, cool. If I, especially on my tour that's going on now, everyone in the rooms listens to the podcast. It's great. So if you shout something out, everyone's like, yeah, dickhead. We all know the references. Yeah, yeah. So no, hardly it's anyone's done it. There's a genuine dialogue between you and the fans without having to fucking meet them. Um <laughs> <laughs> No, it's great. There's that public school, pri- know, private school coming back. Savage. But no, the roast was what a fucking great night. I, I reckon I said the least amount I've ever said on any stage that night. Yeah, you took the piss really with how little yeah. you did. Yeah. And I still think that's maybe my favourite night yeah. in comedy ever. That was the, what that was one of the classic nights of me going, I'm not really a joke writer. And you were like, you need to write at least 20 jokes. And I'm fucking doing my shitty jokes. And at the end, you were like, all the man had been stepped on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's Good night, guys. Night Thanks night for coming. Like, for fuck's sake. Yeah. If you want to watch that, that's on patreon.com slash have a word pod. All of the exclusives for the last God knows how long, two years, two and a half years. But we have these gems of Patreon specials. We mention them on the Patreon advert. But that uh, roast of Adam and Dan was one of the best things I've ever been involved in. Just getting an absolute murderer's row of fucking killers who are all our mates. And then me and Adam sitting there getting absolutely hammered. And I think you took another layer of hammering. Like, I, like we, anyone who, no one could ever accuse me and Adam of not having a sense of humour. Because no. <laughs> my, my, my mates who don't listen to the pod came down to that. Just I mentioned it to them. And she was like, it was like really brutal, wasn't it? You're like, yeah. yeah. That's why it's good. Yeah. Yeah, but like your mate saying horrible stuff to you is a genuine sign of affection. Mm. Like, if that's if that come at you in a tweet from a from someone who obviously doesn't like you, it's the worst thing in the world. It really is. Your mate saying the unsayable to you when they've been given the license to do it. Well, it's and like um is, it's like consent, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you if you if you don't want someone to strangle you. It's a crime. <laughs> but for a lot of people, they, they pay money. 
<laughs> Many of them will listen to yeah. this. Fair play. Good on you. It's just about but, who's doing it and how well they're doing it. And if you've got a safe word. We didn't have a safe word for the... It was the same Imagine principle. It's the, you know, if we'd have had a safe word. Yeah. For the, like, guys, before we start the roast, if, if Adam and I say, Flapjack, you must stop the jokes. We'd never... Hear the fucking end of it. You, you, I don't think you would have been. Um, I think flapjacks are pretty good. Stage would have been rushed. That audience was fucking feral. <laughs> it was so <laughs> opera. It's like ancient Rome. It's brilliant. <laughs> They're just baying for blood. Yeah. I think flapjack, flapjack's a good safe word. I had to go on last as well after Freddie had basically mentioned every child that's been murdered in the last 30 years. <laughs> 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 Freddie name checking every horrific Sun newspaper story. I don't even know if people realise how we put the running orders together that night because no one wanted to go last. No. Everyone really wanted to go first because then you've got a complete blank canvas and nothing yeah. can be stepped on or whatever. And you're not well, following We drew it, didn't we? We drew it. Yeah. But I actually think the running order ended up being pretty perfect. Yeah. Weirdly. I think it w- Were you later on? He I was last. last. I had to follow Freddie. You had lied. Well. <laughs> but like, Mark Nelson set the tone. Brennan did really I, well. I remember. Ishan going just before the interval, because obviously he's so popular with Arla. And then Alfie going first after the break. Freddie, who just took everything as far as he could possibly do so, which yeah. he was always going to do. And then you've done so much roast work and ri- written for roasts as well, yeah. like in America. Yeah. It was probably the perfect I run and order, really. I remember because Alfie was really nervous about it because even though his, his stand-up can be quite brutal, he's just not, you know... Yeah. He, find, he maybe finds it, like, um, harder to write, kind of... Well, it's quite shallow stuff, really, yeah. just in appearances. Um, and then his face, when Nelson started... Because he was just like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I'm not prepared at all. I'm not, you know, you tell yourself that oh, I've got some jokes. And then Nelson, Nelson went so, poof, so like haymakers yeah. early on. And you can see, I don't know if you can see it on the special, but Alfie's just going, oh, my. So no. you've written you've written for Roast in, in the States? Yeah, I wrote on the roast of Alec Baldwin before he fucking shot someone. Oh, I bet um, you were gutted when he... So gutted. Because if, yeah. we- if he'd have just shot someone before it... I know. You could have just done so much more. Yeah. I think if you accidentally murder someone, you- I don't think you should be accepting roast bookings for a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's another loaded gun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, do, you know what I- do you know what I mean? Like... When th- I know what you mean. Yeah, when certain. No, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think Alec Baldwin is such a. Fo- I think he'd be like, nah, it's fine. I can probably get away with it. I think Sorry, he's. W- he's got what? it in it. Get away he- with what? <laughs> oh, both. <laughs> both the murder and the allegedly. Um, no, I reckon he's the kind of character. It's on tape. Like, what are you saying, allegedly? It was on a fucking. Yeah, film, yeah. So. <laughs> were I, think, it. I think he's the kind of character that'd be like, no, I could still do the roast. I don't know. Yeah. He seems a bit sort of. Shaken up by the whole thing. Oh, does he? Yeah. Okay. But, the, but see, the roast, um, the, the writing for roast was how I got on that fucking. Um, I meant to apologise for ruining your hobby, Dan. Oh, the the special, the, yeah, um, the amount of people that tagged me into your interview yeah. on the NFL note. Good morning football is such a big thing in the states. It's such a massive. It's on the network. It's the on the NFL's yeah. network. Yeah. They put so much money to it, and they were like, "Do you know what? It'd be really good. Let's have a British guy. Let's have an English guy, and he'll like not know about the NFL." And you came to end their program. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually. I just got because the production company that I got the, ro- the roast writing work from were just like, "Oh, we also do this show," uh, and we just found out we're filming in London. This is like a week before. Do you want to do anything for it? And I was like. Well, I don't. I don't know anything about NFL, but all right. <laughs> um, th- thinking that I could be like, and we had a meeting where we were like talking about being a correspondent on the, you know, talking to NFL fans and stuff. And my agent stays on the call um, to talk money, and I'm thinking, well, NFL here, that's got to be a decent payday. And then I, I, the I, agent calls me saying, oh, they don't pay anyone; they pay them in exposure. I'm like, that's fuck, what? That's fucking horseshit. So I thought, well, all right, I'll take um. <laughs> I'll take, take some exposure. Shop, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll say some shit if I'm getting paid an exposure. Um, I'll try and make it as exposing as possible. Um, but and I it still, fucking worked. <laughs> yeah. I still didn't think they'd... I didn't plan it to be like that. It just... they. I just didn't think they'd react. They were so skittish, the, the hosts. Um, oh, the host had an absolute period, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. he fucking pooed well, himself. Well, so they had... Um, yeah, but I, you were doing OJ jokes. Yeah. So like, I, well, I didn't in the, know. In the States, it's like... 
what, eight in the morning on Sunday morning. <laughs> you're doing OJ Simpson murdering his wife bits. And you also, could see him like, oh no, but, no, <laughs> no. They've got an earpiece. I didn't, they, they offered me an earpiece and I hate them. So I just said no, but they've all got earpieces so they can hear the head of the NFL like commercial arms going, no, no, no. <laughs> we spent 30 years trying to distance this sport from OJ. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's why he's just like, um, um, <laughs> trying to smile. Screaming oh. in his ear. And then, um, and then the 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 woman, uh, she was the most. She didn't say goodbye to me. Honestly, she was probably pissed off. So um, funny. One of them was loving it. One of them was so yeah. The one on the so far right, funny. he was loving it. It was, yeah. it was fun. But um, they tried to pull me <laughs> mid segment. Like the, I put the whole clip up, the whole video on my YouTube. But you can see that um, I start with a lapel mic, and then after the ad break, I've got a stick mic, and that's because after the first segment, they were like, "You're done." And the producer was like, no, I think he's booked for another segment. And the floor manager was like, no, 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 no you're, you're done. And then um, they take the mic off me. And then they're like, is there any other guest? Any, any, anyone? They start going around the South Bank going, anyone here like American <laughs> football? <laughs> they couldn't find anyone quick enough. So I was like, well, I'll still do it. And then, so the, the second segment starts with a really long shot of Tower Bridge. And that's because yeah. I was just being bundled on with the stick mic. And they were going, oh, for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> So you know, honestly, you, know, you promise you won't do it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I'll be good yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so honestly, I was like, how did you end up like watching the the first clip? It's so funny, but I was like, so surely you just got sacked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and when there's another shot of you and you do the joke again, <laughs> like, I'm like, so. It's when they're like, oh, so Finn, do you know what a stupid, like, fucking- Fumble Ruski. Yeah, a Fumble Ruski is, and you're like, is it? <laughs> Let me underline that thing that got me sacked the first uh, time. I and mean, anyone go, do you know what? Right, no, yeah, we are going to use Finn again. And let's keep the segment in where we ask him things he doesn't know and let him wildly speculate on what it might be. <laughs> when he's just told you that all he knows about American football is that the darling of it killed his wife and a waiter 30 years ago. Yeah. It's so, so, so funny. I got tagged in it so many times. Like, you must be fuming, Dan. You're like, no, I'm not. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, I, 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 was, uh, I went to the NFL a week after with Brennan Reese. I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> it's a fantastic sport, Finn. It really is. Yeah, I yeah. don't stay up to watch it all the time. Yeah. Uh, he did kill a white woman there. <laughs> so you'd have loved it. <laughs> you know he did I mean? an old fumble rooster. <laughs> and he got away with it. What a play. <laughs> and Brennan was like, I thought it was hilarious, but like... They could have give that to someone who watches the NFL. And I was like, yeah, and it wouldn't have been anywhere near as good, would no, it? it have been you could have given that to any British NFL fan. They'd have been there like, I'm on the NFL show. Yeah. It had to go to someone who didn't give a fuck about it and was willing yeah. to do exactly what you did. And there was one person in the country and that was you. <laughs> the, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I answered the call. The, um, yeah, I mean, I tell you what, it's so exhilarating. I don't get booked for live TV much. As, uh, as is probably apparent, but um, <laughs> so exhilarating. Cause it's not even, it's not like you're shitting, you're not shitting on your own doorstep. Cause it's like in another country, it must be what Kevin Bacon feels like. <laughs> Cause, it, Cause it, all those ads are here. So yeah. everyone's like, well, you've fucking given up, but he doesn't care. Cause he's in America doing, you know, no one knows that he's, you know, do you know what I mean? He's used in the UK just to make some yeah. hundred percent. And he'll be getting a fucking shitload of money yeah. for adverts so, yeah. as Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Um, so, but anyway, so because you're basically fucking up people's mornings where you don't live. So, so exhilarating. <laughs> to literally not care at all. And then use it to grow a fan base yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really exploited. It's the perfect murder. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> well, no, the perfect murder is when you murder your wife. <laughs> The old fumble the old ruski. Fumble ruski. Let's be clear. That's what the perfect. I think you is. might get booked for more roast stuff. I think that agent who got you on there, uh, any other TV producer would be absolutely fucking appalled. But oh, surely yeah. that raises your status as listen. Th we've got a job. Maybe Alec Baldwin's not involved, but there's yeah. a roast going on. Do you remember that guy, that British guy, yeah. who fucked up Good Morning Football? Like for a co comedians in the states, must love it. Well, I got a message. Uh, Alfie messaged me with his mate, his mate who lives in the states, saying that it's going. It was going around all the like fantasy football groups and stuff. And yeah, it's crazy. Um, but like I was just saying before, it's weird when you go sort of viral for something that's not your main thing. So it'd be like if people follow me now, wanted me to like, oh, you're gonna say it again. You go, well, I've said it now. I don't have anything else to say. I can take a piss out of Formula One or some other 
fucking shit sport if you want. But. I'd like to see that. Yeah. If, I'd really like to see you if, just get booked for stuff you've got no yeah. interest yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. Every for sport. <laughs> yeah. And now it's uh, 10 pin bowling. <laughs> Finn Taylor a bit. The bowls on BBC Two. Oh, the bowls. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brown green. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> the walking dead in here. <sighs> I think that brings us to a natural break. Yeah, let's have a break. What's happening, everyone? Time to talk about NordVPN. I love NordVPN. You do, don't you? It's one of our fa- my favourite sponsors of this podcast. Have you been using one? I haven't because I don't know what one is. You, but you should know what it is by I now. Should. They, they, they've been a sponsor for like a year or something. I know, but just run me through it again. Just a remind VPN me. is a way to improve your internet security, protection from viruses, but also you can set your location to anywhere on the planet. So like, yeah. for example, you know the way the, the three o'clock Premier League kickoffs are not broadcast in the UK? Of course not. But they are broadcast in other places around the world. Hello. So if you set it to like Canada or Australia or something, you know what I mean? You Belize. watch. Now that's good for Netflix. Oh, though. Belizean Netflix. The Belizean Netflix. <laughs> Love it. They've got so many films that the UK hasn't got, maybe yeah, from yeah, the, yeah. the absolute incredible landscape of Belizean cinema. They just don't release them in the UK. Do you know what I mean? And also, The Dark Knight, that's on the American one, so you set it to American nice, Netflix. Nice, nice, nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. You, to, if you get a VPN, set it to America or Belize or Belarus, you can set it to wherever you want and watch the Netflix catalogue from that country to, rather than the UK. To be honest. All from the comfort of your fucking tower in Liverpool. I just, I'm just going to sign up to stop him talking about Belizean Netflix. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash have a word to get a huge discount off your NordVPN plan plus four months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Go and watch the Reds turn it round and win the league, mate. Yeah, can set the moon on the moon of joy. Keep the moon, set the soul free. I'm in Rotterdam and I feel fine. In Belize. What's happening, lids? As you might have noticed when we moved into the new studio, we've upped our game signage-wise. It's not just a fucking sticker on the wall anymore. We've got these beautiful light-up signs, courtesy of brandgraphics.co.uk. That's graphics with an X. That's G-R-A-P-H-I-X. Brandgraphics.co.uk. If you're looking to get a sign like this made, they also did the decal, the sticker in the original studio. You can go to them for all your signage needs. They helped us. They've provided these to the new studio. We wouldn't have been able to get them without them. They've sorted us out. They can sort you out as well. Uh, please go and support them. They've supported us. That's Brandgraphics with an X. .co.uk. You like them as well, Dan, don't you? Yep. Final section of what has been an absolute fucking corker. I tell you what makes drinking water easier: sugar-free cordial. Yeah, so it's not water really anymore. It, it is though, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. So mainly water. I'm in no position to speak. I'm on sneak. Have you started recording? Yeah. Oh Christ! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's some, quite, pretty, that's some quite damp patter. I thought we've got some. Still in the we've got some apple and blackcurrant Robinsons, sugar free. That's Adam's no, beverage. Sim-so. Sim-so. Sneak, uh, use code word ten. Yes. It'll knock your tits off. And what am I on? Uh, f- whiskey. <laughs> Which Finn one? Taylor. Glenn Murray. Lovely. Do you want to do an advert for it? I do do whiskey reviews on my Instagram. Um, oh, hello. What's your favourite whiskey? Uh, Tomato eighteen. Is it? Yeah, I haven't had that. You had Lagavulin sixteen. Which one? Lagavulin sixteen. Is that an Isla one? It's PT. That's on Parks and Rec. Very PT. Yeah, I'm not. PT, I kind of, no. it's weird. My mum's been drinking, my mum's Scottish, she's been drinking whiskey for like 40 years, or whatever. I think it's an age thing. I think you get to a level where you just will only take like petrol. Yeah. That's all you want. Like yeah. a Freud. Yeah, that kind yeah. of area. I'm still, I really like the sherry casks and I really like the kind of sweety ones. But like a Balveni. Yeah. Balveni. How many's good? Yeah. Bowmore. Balveni 10. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Love a Balveni 10. Yeah, Mordor Nine. Have you tried a Mordor <laughs> Nine? <laughs> Honestly, nice. and a Pokemon Eighteen. <laughs> Mwah. lovely yellowy. There's one color. called uh, Ochen Tochen. No, there's not. <laughs> there is. My wife can't pronounce it. I honestly thought you said that's my Wi-Fi password. <laughs> uh, the Ocken Token 19 is actually the network no, key. O- Ocken, I think it's pronounced Ocken Token. My wife can't pronounce it. She calls it Auschwitz. Um, <laughs> uh, ironically, it's not very smoky. Now, I don't know if that will go out. Oh, oh no, it will. Yeah, it will. It? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, it won't be clipped. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it won't be clipped. Please don't. Please don't clip that. It'll one. stay in the main edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah fine. Woo! Um, 
That's my advice. Cheers. Uh, do you want to... <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he's a ledge. Um, should we do some advice? Yeah. I think you can, a man drinking whiskey doing Auschwitz jokes can give advice, can't he? Sure. Aspox, is that one of the... Aspox. Aspox, sorry. I don't know what it is. Aspox is the American version. Agony yeah. Adam. Um, so, Adam, as we know, is very uh, good at solving people's problems. This is from Anonymous. Uh, wag wag lids, please keep this anonymous. I need you to have a word with some de deceiving woman. Woman! From Tearful. Such incels. From, <laughs> <laughs> from Florida, who is trying to blackmail me. Long story short, we talked on Snapchat for a couple of days, then things got um, exciting, and she was sending me all sorts of sex vids and stuff. Being a gentleman, I returned the favor. Is th There's nothing more gentlemanly than wanking on a selfie video. Surprise, surprise. How do you know he was wanking? Just to, just to guess that that's... That's what selfie sticks are for, really, isn't it? Actually, I think if you're a lad and you a bit of go sex video oh. back, I think I just my head went to the wanking selfie. Could be fucking his couch. Could be fucking his couch. Well, surprise, surprise. You'd, she you'd then, probably need a two-camera setup to get that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Or, Will, a, or a videographer. Will Speed. <laughs> surprise, surprise. She then screenshotted them and is now asking for $300 or she'll send them to all my Facebook friends, including my lovely mum and so forth, which is by far the biggest boner killer I've ever experienced. She got swiftly told to get fucked, and now I'm currently too scared to look at my mum in the eyes because I have no idea whether she's seen me tugging one out. I was right. Horrible situation. I'm not looking forward to Christmas. Just own it. Just put on Facebook, hey, I was sending this girl. Just do exactly what you've done here to us and just tell all your family and friends. Like, also, this is a common thing now, isn't it? Being asked for, like, sex vids by women. Also, your mum, your mum is, you know, she's tidied your bedroom. She knows where the bodies are. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She's walked in just as you finished, and she can tell you can, she can tell that you have that kind of, like, autistic postcard. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? Well, no, I'm, I've just been chilling. You know, she can, yeah. they know. And she's still got a sense of smell. Yeah. She knows. They're like raptors. They know. Yeah. <laughs> Raptor it's all, mom. It's all in there. They know. And your cum smells a lot stronger to other people than you. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like you're used to your own is that, scent. Is that, um, yeah, and mum's no cum. That's a fact. <laughs> can we just Google that's that? It's a different Iceland can we, just, <laughs> can we just fact check whether that's true? What's, what's the question? Does cum, does cum smell sm stronger to other people? <laughs> it's a fact. Yeah. And bears. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you meant to jizz in a bear if you see one. Yeah, get on your <laughs> if you can come with a bear charging you, you've done really yeah. well. Yeah, that's a danger wank. Well, it's my kink. Uh, there's no, there's no result for it because Big Pharma want to yeah. suppress the truth. Big Pharma. It says, it says uh, it, it can experience <laughs> a hang smell on, similar on. to bleach or ammonia. Semen is, smells like bleach or chlorine. Yeah, I don't. What? What? Bleach or chlorine? Anyone? What? Did you come smell like bleach? Oyster. I know what they mean. Oysters. I know what they mean. No, because when you bleach, if you like, you use bleach, when you walk into a room, you're like, fuck, yeah, I can't help. Open a window. <laughs> I'm not having that problem after I <laughs> No, because it's your cum. Of course. <laughs> Question. It's my bleach, isn't it? Yeah, 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 Question. Forgot. What if your wife's hands smell of bleach? And ask her some questions. All uh, right, cool. What's her number? <laughs> I think you know. Have you been cleaning? Or have you been, you know, toilet what? fuck four at Jeez. once? <laughs> I'm, pi I'm, I'm a bit pissed now. I think uh, my hands smell like toilet fuck <laughs> without a t-shirt, like Farmer John. Toilet fuck. People are into that, don't they? People, people probably they sit on toilets like front way. You yeah. know, Japanese toilets with the f yeah, yeah, yeah. That is actually a thing. He's not making that up. No, my daughter does it. My daughter, just on a normal toilet. There's no B day involved. Oh. She just got this thing of like, just to be You've different. Got no, yeah. She just yeah. sits on the toilet the wrong way. Yeah. Well, some people sit on the toilet the wrong She's way. fucking maverick. Because then the Japanese fucking water pipe yeah, yeah, presses yeah. against the clitoris for orgasms. Right, cool. Well, that conversation was too close together to the one I started. You should <laughs> not have brought it up. <laughs> well, you, you my no, my I thing was a continuation of what he was on about. Oh, we don't I was have like, a B people are into that. And you're like, yeah, my daughter does Oh, that. sorry, I missed I that bit. Like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so sorry. I In my head, I missed the B-Day bit. And that's why I mentioned, yeah. If there was a B-Day facility B -days and my daughter are, did that, are too I'd low smash down. the toilet with a hammer <laughs> and we'd all piss on the lawn. 
as a protest oh, well, what, the from house, a pervy the little five-year-old. The house we moved into has got a bidet. Has it? Yeah, yeah. We've not really. Used, I mean, I do use it for sort of washing my feet and balls because it's what else? Have you use washed it for? it for the bum bum though? Have you used it for the bum bum? No, I Isn't used it? a bomb gun in Dubai. I, see, now, I, I, if, I, if it's thing, a movable gun, it's not. Yes, it's not movable. That's the problem. Oh. And you know how you they they say you're not meant to wash raw chicken in a sink. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. who says that? <laughs> well, ironically, quite a lot of people from the same communities that use bidets, <laughs> West Indians. Anyway. Um, the, the, we bought the house from a West Indian family and uh, apparently bidets are much more common yeah. in different communities. Anyway, my point is you're not meant to wash raw chicken in the same sink. as where you clean your ass. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. I think the West Indians are onto something. No, I no man, that's dirty. <laughs> Get the chicken out the bidet. I, now, that's Jamaica. <laughs> That was fucking. That was. Um, that was. Uh, Where did you say Som- Somalian pirate? <laughs> Where did you say West West Indian? Yeah, yeah, West Indies, Jamaica. Oh, I thought you meant Caribbean. the west of India. No, that that was Columbus's big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that's why it's called the West Indies. Genuinely, it's because they got there in fifteen non- whatever, and then went, oh, this must be India because they were so fucking stupid and racist. Yeah, and because um, cricket is still basically run by the same people, like no, they're called the West Indies. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know. Okay. You didn't um, get it because you don't ask about cricket. Yeah. Anyway, I've not been washing my chicken where I wash my ass. <laughs> okay, just to clear <laughs> that up. <laughs> Sunday roast upstairs. This fucking, but, but it's the same principle in that you. Tell me how you do your jerk chicken. <laughs> it's got a particular flavour. <laughs> There's, um. <laughs> anyway. Turtle Bay. Levi Roots. Um, <laughs> There's, um. The point is, is that you, because you spray the chicken with water and it goes all over your like you're washing up and yeah, the rest yeah, of the yeah, kitchen, yeah. and if it's in bad chicken, or E. Whatever, coli, all that shit. The same principle I find with a static bum gun <laughs> is that if it's hitting my ass, it's gonna just yeah all over the the um yeah 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 the bathroom. A little, I mean, basically the shower head. If we're really yeah, I don't know. You just want to pop something up there. Just have a little scratch. Yeah. It's fine, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was the question? It's fine. It's, you've been so you're getting scammed by some rat in Florida. Your mum's she knows you're a dirtbag. Yeah, you're a young. The only lad. reason to be worried about this is if you're embarrassed about the shape or size of your cock. Thing is, as a parent, <laughs> at, now I'm at, now I'm a parent. I understand how like that your parents just like your embarrassment can never. You can never be too embarrassed because we've seen it. This morning, I saw a shit come out of my daughter's asshole like. From this angle, on like, the lawn, incredible. <laughs> yeah, no, she was sat. She was sat here, but um, she was on a changing table. But seeing it from like, I almost wanted it to be classical music, like a sort of um, big, the- big Bang video. It yeah. was so like visceral. Yeah, and um, it's rough. It's rough. It's it's, yeah. it's rough. It's very the first time you because obviously my daughter was born and it's it's pretty graphic and you're like I just don't even know. If I should be anywhere, and this is it's the just time, too the much. The first time it happened, because she's also eye contact, she's just like her, huh? and you're like, oh, fuck, I don't know where to look. And then the first time it happened, I just, like, I just called for my wife, I was like, Amanda, huh? I just didn't know what to do, because you just see this thing coming out slowly. When you get poo on your hands for the first time, you're like, I really love you. It feels Because like I you. haven't fucked you out the window. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, when, if anyone, I'm telling you this right now, I love you a lot. Any of you get your poo on my hands, there is a major problem. You're, you're I think you know full well that it's not impossible that that happens to me. <laughs> and you're when saying, you're you're saying like, that like that's not a bit on you. <laughs> yeah, that, you get Adam <laughs> shit on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm making chicken. Come on, Adam. Yeah, the bomb gun in Dubai was a, a revelation. When I get my own house, probably next year, I'm absolutely installing a bomb gun. It felt good. Yeah. Never mind the fucking rolling blackouts. Adam's cleaning his ass. <laughs> well, the water's still on. You should um, you should have one uh, by the front door, by the hose pipe. You know, when people like wash the dog outside. You should come back for water. <laughs> Shh. Morning, and then Literally. and then you're using the excess uh, water on your flower beds in the front garden, which is good for the environment. I'm told. Fertilizer. As if well. you ever have Adam over to say he's like fucking, hell, I love that outdoor bomb gun. No, just a tap. It's just, <laughs> just a tap a for the sprinkler. <laughs> for the garden hose, Adam. One for the roses, one for my asshole. Hose pipe ban, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine during a heat wave. 
Roe just fucking dousing his ass <laughs> on the street. Would you be? I mean, it's a bit difficult, mate. Would you be? Would you? you your your mum's lovely. I've met your mum. Yeah. yeah, many a time. Yeah, such a gentle woman. <laughs> Where's this going? kind? Where's this guy? Kind but sensitive. You know. Yeah. And soft to the touch. <laughs> I imagine. Fan of Poirot and my comedy. Yeah. Good woman. Strong woman. <laughs> Hearty thighs. No. Um, Hearty thighs. <laughs> um, I'm imagining oh. now oh. a kind of squat. Oh, no. Tight head prop. No, kind of no, no, no. Is your mum Turkish or your dad Turkish? Maureen Kuvalu. Dad's Turkish. Dad's Turkish yeah. Oh, no, yeah. She's a wonderful Welsh woman. Okay. Well, mom's She's right. from the hills, but in a good way. S similar kind of, but there's a similar kind of you yeah, know, yeah, 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 squat, yeah. squat, no nonsense. Big, to big farmer. She's known many. What, sorry, uh, big farmer is in what? PH or <laughs> <laughs> literally a big farm woman. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? What do they mean when they say <laughs> big farmer? Yeah. <laughs> Finn's big mum. You're in the pocket of some massive fat farmer. <laughs> big farmer John. Sorry. He's very litigious. <coughs> um, if you, if there was a, if there was a video online. If there was a video online where some girl's been like, fucking hell, Finn. Like, she's from a distant part of the world that you could never visit. The yeah. south of Wales. Yeah. Because we know never there's been. no roads. I've never been. She's like, fucking hell, Finn. I love you on Have a Word. I do. Send us a, send us a fucking video. Send us a video of you wanking off, you big lad. Like that. I thought and you were going to say yeah. big man. <laughs> oh, well, look at that. He's no. got a hearty Sorry, knob. It's all right. I'm back um, to it. <laughs> and, and then she was like, ah, stupid. My name's Jeff. <laughs> Farmer uh, Jeff. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this video to your mum yeah. unless you give me 300 euros. Ooh. Yeah, what would you do? I um, mean, would you be asked? Um, I'm saying. It's obviously not ideal. It's not ideal. Uh, no, it's not ideal. Kind of, but I think you'd get over it. I wouldn't want it on the internet. As in... But like, isn't it illegal for them to put it on the internet? Yeah. Yeah, it's revenge I porn, think, isn't it? Yeah. I wouldn't, I'd, I'd own it, I think. Not ashamed. I think my Bring respect. it on. Let's do it. Joel Domit oh, sold out the one. Apollo after that happened to him. Yeah. I'm ready. So I've got Joel Domit had a wanking I'm, video. You yeah, know I've had a similar thing. He wrote a show this. about but it. We he, have spoke about this before. He wrote yeah. about, he wrote a show about it and leaned into it and um yeah. He, yeah. yeah. I mean I would like to see Joel Domit wanking. Because that's the problem, is that he looks, looks like, like an angel. Does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> looks like an angel on growth form. Someone punching a blancmange. I don't want seeing that. If I honestly propped up a camera and like, did it? I don't even know where you put the camera for a wanking video. But if it was like up the body, I'd use a drone. <laughs> Have you never done it, Dan? What? You've never done it? When? I don't know. I've been you, the... You're not. You're not that long out of the game. <laughs> Dan, Dan got an impression of spitting him as done. <laughs> Constable. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's a renaissance painter is he wanking um yeah um no i've never done no i had a flip phone when i met laura just uh, yeah so you can't do it on a flip phone just like you know i am um, i have told this story on have a word before but we've got many a new listener so if you have heard this before i apologize it's time for a have a word classic adam um, went on robot wars <laughs> Didn't actually eventually go on Robot oh, Wars. Sorry, sorry. And if you'd listened to the story properly, you'd know we I didn't quite make it. Oh. Um, have I told you about building that robot? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was a girl from Aberystwyth Uni. Who, uh, it's always the Welsh. So I matched with her on Tinder when I was there to do Aberystwyth Uni. That old, the, the mad freshers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with, the, with the rider. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wednesday night. <laughs> Amazing night. Yeah, that's what they call that. You got a peer. Um, you got a peer pressure. What? That that club at the end on the pier. Did you go out in Aberystwyth? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so jealous. Yeah, I went out in Aberystwyth. Wow, it's great. Um, oh, sorry, go on. Yeah, so we we sort of swapped. <laughs> we swapped phone numbers and Facebook and whatever, and exchanged a few messages. Yeah, I remember it now. And uh, a few uh, videos, and then one day she asked me. She hadn't, I hadn't spoke to her for about a month and I just got a, a, a Snapchat from her that said, can you send me a dick pic? And I was in bed and I was like, sure. And immediately she screenshotted it and then blocked me. 
And I was like, oh, what the fuck's she going to do with that? And I was like, do you know what? No one's going to know. It's my dick. She can't prove it's my dick. And then I just double-checked the photo that I'd sent again. And in soft focus in the background was a picture of me mum. <laughs> Still thing, doesn't the prove we- it's you. <laughs> the, weird, the weird thing was... Still doesn't prove it's you, though. The weird thing was, he was in a travel lodge. <laughs> Gideon's Bible, Rose Mum. Hey, there she go. There yeah. Oh, fucking hell. Well, that's a request. Weirdly, I was in your old bedroom. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. I've never, I've never um, taken one. No. If I, no, it just, I just... Oh, no, no, no. I'm, and the not. only reason I'd take a picture of my dick now is because the NHS sometimes likes Do to see pictures. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Private meds. Yeah. It's <laughs> looking really manky. Well, look, the doctor wants to see a picture first. Yeah. <laughs> Doctors are dirty yeah. bastards, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Doc- Doctors never, black never from above. <laughs> no, never from never above. Never from above. What? You get a bit of balls in. Got, you got, you okay. can't take it from above like it's the fucking yeah. first Grand Theft Auto <laughs> game. <laughs> oh, shooting out car like bullets. <laughs> Didn't realise we were getting the light right and doing a silhouette of your dick. <laughs> No, you have to. You have to sort of take it, sort of from the base. Yeah. Oh. But, but that's why like you, you have the photos you see, oh. and you have the camera like there. But that's oh. why the photos you see, everyone's got all their chins out because they're like like that because they're looking down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's meant to look imposing, isn't it? It's like when you take a photo of someone like that, and they're all like, you know. Yeah. I think I take mine from behind <laughs> and like have my willy like looking over like a you know just looking over a hill like what's that? That's nice, isn't it? Draw little eyes on him. No. One of my ex-girlfriends stuck googly eyes on me cock once. Yeah. <laughs> she going on Blue Peter or something? <laughs> what? She going on Blue Peter? <laughs> Part of an heart attack. <laughs> got a, got on like, a ladder and went, look at that. We ran out of pipe cleaners, so this one we made earlier. I, I went for a nap while I was naked and she... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she had a multicoloured stamp that she put all over my legs and she cut two googly eyes out and put it on my cock and I woke up and I had stamps all over my legs and eyes on my cock. Yeah. One of the more playful sexual assaults you're going to hear about. <laughs> um, if only more googly eyes were used, never mind. Uh, I just think if, you, if you've got a wife, this is where this is a very different, this is like, you're losing your house, aren't you, because of a fucking Snapchat. Has he said yeah, but, that? No, no but, but that, I mean, this, if, he, if, if it's your mum, who's asked? If he's doing yeah, that. What's she going to do, put your fucking minimal rent up? Shut up, you mum. Uh, another one. Should we do more advice? Sure. Uh, yeah, um, the advice there yeah. was basically, listen, lad. Just tell her. Go ahead, put it out there. We'll just inform my family and friends. Yeah. I was exchanging some of Ross. Okay. Leon Burgess says, lads, need some advice. 9th of December, I've obviously got tickets to the live show. Now the rats at my son's nursery have just announced they're holding the first ever Christmas show carol service on the same day. Fucking rats. What do I do? Zero pressure from the wife as she got me live show tickets as a gift, but the boy has already asked me if I will be there. Oh, Do I tell him the truth that I'm going up north to drink and watch the mental shit that you boys are planning to do? Or do I tell him that I'll be there to watch and the rest of the little cunts sing jingle bells badly and ruin six months of plans? As Dan will probably tell you, don't have kids. They fuck up your plans. Love them, really. Mm. Uh, that's Leon who is in a bit of a quandary here uh, I don't know how many have a word lives we are going to do at an arena I'm you, not saying we're not going to do more and, but is, there's no it's no definite have low, every year they're going to do something yeah. and um, if they're nursery they're under five they'll do one at school when they're five I mean you're taking on the arena aren't you yeah mm. yeah yeah our show will be better you'd hope so yeah just because I know how much it's costing, you'd think yeah. I, if this primary school <gasps> has got a fire button, Guys, I'm impressed. Lads, I don't know how it, how set it is, but if you could get that that guy's nursery to get the kids up there, yeah, and do a little song. Yeah, the problem is Freddie Quinn's on stage, so <laughs> oh, he's not allowed within ten feet, is it? Really? I don't know. <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> Legally, it's a big right. stage, so I reckon we yeah, can keep yeah. the ten feet bound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's still be up. We need a gun to keep us. I'd love that. Little, having the little kids come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that sounded horrifically nancy. I'd love that. The little kids. No, I get in touch. Email Finn. Is it Finn or Finley? Finley. Finley at haveawordnetwork.com and Finley will arrange you. We'll have these as part of the live show. Get them to come on. Can we vote? 
Can we put this to the vote? This is a democracy. Judge Rowe sits in session. We're voting on whether Leon should go to the Have A Word live show or his kids, one of his kids' nativities. I'm voting live show. Live show. Live show. I'm voting live show, but with the kids coming up to be part of it. All right. Cool. Yeah, there you go. If there's ever an opportunity to Adam to spend more money on the production of this show, he fucking takes it. They'll need, obviously, hotels for the teachers. A lot. Fuck it. Fuck it. We've gone bust. Doesn't matter. It's a spectacle. <laughs> Will they need suits? Um, <laughs> um, oh, I love kids in suits are so funny, man. <laughs> Get them all in suits. 80s crushed velvet tuxes. Fucking love it. Um, I, 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 I want us to hear. Uh, I want us, the uh, me, Finn, Carl, uh, Dan. For the after party of the arena, I want us all in matching crushed velvet suits. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, should we do a have a word? Should we do a have a word? <laughs> Not been doing have a words recently, have we? But Adam and Dan, tell us all the problems. Whole podcast. Now it's just a temp, 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 temp. This is from Anonymous Lady. Wag, wag, let's. Don't know. <clears throat> Wag -wag -lids. <laughs> Don't know if you need to have a word with me or my fellow. We've been together nearly two years now. Live with each other for almost a year. We've talked about marriage, kids, the works. 90% of the time, everything is amazing. We get along great. He treats me like a quag queen. We work together. <laughs> Sorry, it's mine. I misread it. He treats me like a quag. We What's work together quag? too. We work Somebody together. washes their chicken in the B day. <laughs> We work together too. I think this is where my insecurities come from. He's worked in our company for a while and, it, uh, and me not as long. He got me the job. Exes of his have also worked there and many staff know them well. I hear stories of how he's fucked them in work and several places he's done it. Rooms I go in on the daily uh, 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 and I'm reminded of. And even from his own mouth, he's never even once tried it with... Uh, oh, even from his own mouth, he's told me the stories. But he's want, never once tried it with me. I know it's a big kink in general... If you work with someone you're sleeping with, it's kind of just a thing and has been for him clearly in the past with everyone else. But if I bring it up, he just brushes past it and it seems like a solid no. Says he's matured past it now, but I know it wasn't long, so long before me that one of these exes worked there and everyone, including himself, still jokes about the stories and seems almost braggy. Um, I'm up for quite a lot and quite a sexual being. I like trying new stuff and being a bit risky. And clearly, so was he with them, but just not me. Have a word with me for feeling insecure and like I'm just inadequate to these other girls. Or have a word with him for being a pussy -o and making me feel that way. I've tried other turns in uh, turn-ons, like lingerie and outfits, and he just doesn't seem to care for it at all. I don't know how to turn this guy on, and it's really upsetting me and making me feel like... I'm just unattractive. Uh, am I being paranoid? Sorry, that uh, was uh, there wasn't a lot of grammar in, no, that, I, in, I, I'll in, be in the right I places. Cut in that out email. from that twice during that. Um, <laughs> I sorry, don't think anyone needs to be. I don't know. We need to have a word either. After me, I just think it's possible that you know she she is a little bit insecure, but that's okay. And maybe he just finds her repulsive in the workplace. <laughs> <laughs> so is it just is the is the is the <laughs> is the kink issue just because he won't get You're banged at work? Right. I think it's because <laughs> all your suspicions are correct. <laughs> I think if he hadn't in the past, he shouldn't have an issue. It's no, but here's the here's the thing: you, the, the come when you come to settle down, yeah. there is there is stuff that I've done in the past that I would not do to my wife out of respect <laughs> because she just, she kisses our child with that mouth, right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? There are, she washes chicken in that bidet, for God's sake. <laughs> she washes chicken with that asshole. And you want me to go in then? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I think, what, so, I think, hang on. There's stuff you've done with women in the past that you wouldn't do with your wife. Yeah, Alf, because I respect her more than with people I've been with in the past. There was more of a fling. <laughs> I don't think that is old fashioned. <laughs> I know exactly you what know you what mean. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're with someone, you go, well, this is clearly not going to be a thing. thing. Yeah. Let's you can't poo on your wife. Dig up, dig up all you exactly. cannot poo on your wife. Because if the baby starts crying, she's got shit in her chest. You're turtlenecking. What do you do? You go, fucking hell, we've got to call grandma. No. Rain it in. 
You've, you're an adult. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Minimum, you need a babysitter. At least. And a hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can't shit on anyone's chest when the monitor's on. No, no. I didn't say you can't shit on anyone's chest. You can't shit on your wife's chest. Um, I love that she's like... If your, mate's, if your mate's around and you had a few jars, I'm just going by. <laughs> Uh, uh. Shout out Mrs. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful woman. Clean. <laughs> Clean. Clean as that chicken, mate. Clean. <laughs> Fucking hell. I think you just try and nosh him off at work. I've forgotten what the question was. <laughs> Is it what, what if I what can we just can we just what just trying to give oh. some like yeah, I don't need you to have a word. If he's banged all of these birds in the place that you now work and everyone's like, ah do you remember when you fucked Big Jill on the photocopier? <laughs> hey Oh sorry Mandy. Nah, out of respect, we don't talk about that now. I think you need to have a word with these animals at work and we're like, oh yeah, your finger blasted her in the fucking other place at work. <laughs> I don't work. I've not worked properly. Yeah, it is weird that they're like talking about it around. I think they. Yeah, I think that's who we need yeah. to have a word about. Yeah, yeah. it's colleagues. Yeah. yeah, come on, guys. Yeah. Where the fuck do you Maybe work? Quick a, um, fit. What kind of? Yeah. What kind? Of, where's the HR department in this? <laughs> quick fit. <laughs> Underneath the car. They're all really. They're all really the laddie tires. at work. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. You're at I, Evans I think, Show. Uh, here's a bit of advice for, I know they didn't ask for advice, but here's the thing, the people who work there, show this to the people who work there, from now on, whenever you're talking about this this lovely woman's Cheers. fella and his previous escapades, just invent a new character. Yeah. So just say, oh, this isn't about Gary. Do you remember John? He used to shag everyone in every room. Big John. He used to be a farmer. People, people <laughs> change. got a job at Quick. People change over time. People yeah. change, people move on, you know. So you can't, I just want to pull you up on, on something here. And uh, my good lady wife is not going to enjoy this. I think, uh, you know, if you're into plopping on people and, and that's something that you've done before marriage, I don't think the, the binding contract of marriage should stop that. I think you should plop away. Do you know what? the safety of a loving relationship. What's, what, what I have issue and with is And what kind of carpets have you got? Check people. <laughs> if they can have domestos used on them. There's two, there's two things I'd add, to, I'd add to that. The first is, <laughs> I don't agree with you unless they're one of these people that are like, I won't have sex before marriage, but I'll do anything but. Anything but is far worse than sex. If you're, <laughs> if you're at the altar... And you're like, yeah, I've actually saved myself for marriage. I mean, he's, he's shat on my chest, but <laughs> my vaginal virginity is intact because I believe in the Lord. That's horseshit. Yeah, arsehole in tatters, but yeah, yeah. Jesus loves but, a bummel. Um, uh, Brett Goldstein, who's now very famous, told me a story of, I don't know if it's an urban myth or it's friends of his, but this couple that had been together for years, they'd done everything. They'd done absolutely everything, but they'd never done stuff with shit. And so as one kind of, I don't know, they're like, let's, let's see if we're these people. Um, they kind of like all their shit on each other and stuff and they get shit everywhere. And then apparently they wake <laughs> up the next morning, they take a load of drugs and, you know, it's like real hippie shit. They take a load of drugs and shit on each other and then, <laughs> you know, 60s stuff. And then, um, <laughs> and then they, um, <laughs> yeah. and then they wake up the next morning and they, they don't take the feet to each other and they clean the whole house and then they just, he just walks out the door and they never speak to each other again. <laughs> and then, They've been together. They've been together for like ten years, and they just—they then locked a part of themselves they couldn't put back in a box, and they just—they just had to split up. It's a really sad story because they were really—they were really in love, and I think that's a lesson in why you shouldn't shit on your romantic partners. That was—that was the last day of the summer of love, that nineteen sixty-seven, yeah. yeah. and then it, then it was the Manson murders, and then now we're here. <laughs> First of January, nineteen sixty-eight. Everyone wiped up and walked away. Yeah, yeah, genuinely. <sighs> that, ladies and gents, has been one of mwah, the finest. Finn, there's a reason why people don't drink whiskey at midday. <laughs> I think we need more whiskey in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Finn, one last time. Where do we find tickets for the tour? Because we need to know. Uh, all tour tickets at FinnDaily.com. All my socials are at Finn Taylor Comedy. I'm on TikTok now. Oh, you Look absolute! Ah, oh, they love it. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and watch Finn versus the Internet. 
On Finn YouTube. versus the internet, which is essentially Finn <laughs> inviting unsuspecting <laughs> internet influencers onto his show yeah. for what they believe is going to be a really straight down the line interview yeah. is spectacular. I love it so much. So go and watch that and yeah. make sure if you have, I mean, you have already, but if you haven't watched Finn on Good Morning Football, the clip is also on his YouTube channel. Yeah. Subscribe to my YouTube because more Finn versus the internet is coming very soon. Yeah, wonderful. Last few tickets available. We talked about the arena show. Last few tickets available. Now, do you know what? Don't buy them. We've sold enough. We don't need you. You've dragged your deals. We don't want you there. Cool. Interesting tactic. Comediansclubchester.com <laughs> for tickets to November the 26th. We have um, Carl Donnelly and Sean McLaughlin. And as Finn said, it's a fucking great gig. Great gig. And Rowie Bags is there in Feb. Yeah, and we'll be there in February. Um, that pod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick song. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you know what? I'd love a quick song. Yeah. Uh, this is from a band called The Cheap Thrills. Want to get a Scouse rating on them? They're from okay. the Walton Vale out of 10. Walton Vale? Yeah. Yeah, Walton's pretty rough, like. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Yeah. Well, you this song. the fucking Tesla. This song's called Codependence, and they've just uh, worked with Liverpool Football Club. So. All right, cool. Decent. All right, Enjoy. go ahead. You don't get that on YouTube, but you get it on the audio. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs>